The mayor? What, you guys didn't hear? Hear what? Guess who our commencement speaker is? Siegfried? No. Roy? No. One of the tigers? Come out of the fantasy, Will. Scene one, Apple, take one. Hey, guess what day it is, guys? It's graduation day! Graduation! Welcome to episode 54 of Revisiting Sunnydale. This is a, a jam-packed episode because we're not doing graduation day part one, but we're also going to do graduation day part two. So settle in because this might be a couple hours. That's a long one. It, it's going to be it's going to be a minute. Mm-hmm. Plus, we have special guest Nancy Holder. Author, You're going to love her. Author of all Buffy goodness. Mm-hmm. And um, she's a fucking hoot. She is. And I want to hang out with her more. Um, she said that she would come back to the show, so hopefully we're going to hold her to that. Yeah. We're going to hold her to it. (laughs) All right, so settle in, (laughs) because it's going to be a really big, 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 big old episode of Revisiting Sunnydale. Oh, by the way, I'm Camila. And I'm Marcella. And um, we are going to be your hosts through this gala event. Super sad. Graduation day is all about, you know, transformation and growth and stepping into the unknown. But of course, in Sunnydale, that shit gets amped up to like a million. Because every, you know, people got to die. Monsters got to be born. You can't just have a simple fucking event or an episode of anything. Just everything needs to be amped up with demons. What happened in Sunnydale before Buffy got there? Like, I don't know. Like, was all this kind of thing just going on? And people were just kind of like, man. Playing like a blind eye. Yeah. To like, did all this go down before she got there? Or is she the cause? She brought all this shit with her. There's going to be spoilers, kids, as always. And um, please, as always, visit our Facebook page, Revisiting Sunnydale. Give it a like. Mm-hmm. Post some stuff. Talk to us. You can also um, uh, da, 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 follow us on Twitter yes. at Back to Sunnydale. And um, Buffy's no longer on Netflix. Or Amazon. Or Amazon. You got Hulu. I think you got to buy it on Amazon. You got to buy it on yeah. Amazon. But if you uh, want the free freebies, the freeness, mm-hmm. go to Hulu. Hulu. Which, you know, not totally free, but, you, you know, for eight for bucks it. a month. Right. You, you can get, have your Buffy. You get Buffy and all of their stuff. And Angel. Yeah. And other stuff, too. All right. So. <clears throat> We've got some unboxing. Thing. We got some stuff to uh, unbox and talk about. Mm-hmm. Things of that nature. You want to go first? Sure. You got quite a bit. I do. I have, and it's a very. Well, we got, got three. It's not got that three, terrible. and we've got we've got a, a beauty and two geeks. A beauty. So, beauty sounds like and a the show. geeks <laughs> coming this fall. Uh huh. Beauty and two geeks. So, if you were with us for our prom episode, mm-hmm. I spent a good deal of time bitching about the size of the bag <laughs> that Ipsy sent me. So this <laughs> month. <laughs> <laughs> Overcompensate. Overcompensation. But this is a great That's bag. Really a good one though. This is great. It's um, huge. It's it will fit makeup brushes. Yes, it'll fit a hairbrush. Yeah. <laughs> I might even be able to fit my travel like rela- uh flat iron in right, this. Right, seriously. This thing is huge. It's but huge. I like it. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> so, good on you for realizing your shortcomings. <laughs> So we get another makeup brush. Nice. That's Very nice. Yeah. I'm not sure what its purpose is, but maybe that's I'll use it for something. It's I think it's an eyeshadow brush. Probably. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then we get another who doesn't love eyeliner. I don't care how many eyeliners you send me. Just keep sending them. I don't care. I've got like 40 now. As long as they're black. Yeah. And this one, ooh, is falling out. So that's oh, not great. Interesting. Um, I think I've used that one before. It's a model co. I'm not happy about what just happened. It just like flew out at me. Yeah, it's kind of like a mechanical pencil situation. And it's okay, but it's a bit spotty. Like, yeah. And it flew out at me. So, Uh, not pleased about that. But, okay, eyeliner. Great. Again, with the pinky. I'm so tired of these pinky. Oh, lip. Mauvey lipstick colors. And this one's very wee. But again, it's mauvey pinky. Yeah. That's. I'm sick of it. I have 40. Lipstick's that same color. Like, lipstick comes in, like, 80 different shades. Yeah. Can we please just, like, send in one of the fun ones, like a dark purple. Right. A bright purple. <clears throat> and next we have an air repair Ooh. complexion boosting moisturizer. But it says it has hyalur- hyaluronic acid. 
why do I want to put that on my Why do I want that? Why do I want to put acid Complexion on my face? Complexion boosting moisturizer. It's going to boost it because I'm going to burn my skin right. off. <laughs> I, what? No. In the bag. And then there was a Fermetic Eyeshadow Palette, which I uh, was super excited about at first. So I'm like, look at this packaging. This yeah. is going to be great. <laughs> A teeny t- is that eyeshadow? Mm-hmm. Big overture. Teeny show. <laughs> it's so tiny. So tiny. And again, it's mauvey pinky pink. Like, please. And it looks also kind of difficult to open. Yeah. Oh, it's a slider. It's a slider. But you're also going to drag your nail across it. Right. <laughs> right when you try to get, you're yep. going to screw the whole thing up. <laughs> so I wasn't really that excited about that. For that nail polish. Yeah. This last item I bought with my rewards. Oh, okay. And it is... Wait, is that not nail polish? Mm-mm. Oh. But that nail polish I was from last month... I was super excited about the color. Ew. What is that? So this is a chart uh, friction stick. And you... It's an exfoliating cleanser, which I just got all over my hands. <laughs> Um, but you use it on your face and stuff, and it's an exfoliator. It had really good reviews. So do you just like, and mm-hmm. then wash it off? Mm-hmm. Huh. Interesting. So I can't wait to use it, to huh. try it out. I used all my points. Nice. You collect Ipsy points after a while. And yes, if this had been a purple nail polish, I would have been super thrilled. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. The bag is really good. They get a six out of ten because the bag was really cool. Wow! But the products kind of lackluster. All right. Um, <clears throat> I guess I will do my March pop in a box. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do my March pop in a box. Okay. It was better than February's, which you got a White Walker. Yes. Um, but this one also, like, it was in the same vein, but not exactly what I wanted. Like, I wanted the genre, but not the Mm-hmm. Specific one. It's Erin Gilbert from Ghostbusters. Aww. She's the one I didn't, like, I wanted the least. I like her the least. Right. I would have wanted <laughs> uh, Kate McKinnon's character. Yeah, any of them. Any of the other ones I would have rather had. Holtzman. Yes, I would have wanted Holtzman. Yep. She's my favorite. Yep. Or Abby, because Melissa McCarthy's super funny. Yep. But this was like... You guys know how I feel about this movie, but... <laughs> not the biggest fan of this movie right but this was like the the character that I least wanted mm-hmm. out of all of them so I haven't couldn't de- get a Leslie Joe. I know I, I, so I haven't decided what I want to do with her just yet if I want to hold on to her and get the rest or if I I don't know if I care that much about right. the whole thing I might just go ahead and and give her away so do they have stay tuned pop swap sites where you could like they do but I don't know if I want to get into all that with the shipping it and seems the, like a lot yeah seems like a lot. I would much rather just give it away. So now you can go back into the way Pop in a Box works. You can go back in now and say, ugh, I have this one. Do not send it to me again. Yes. Yes, you can do that. And I was like, (laughs) and apparently I had checked off all the other ones that I wanted, but I had left her blank because I was kind of like, I don't know if I want or not. So they send me this one, the one that I was unsure about instead of one of the other ones that I was like, yes, I definitely want this one. You're like, thank you. Your system works great. (laughs) I have so much faith in you now. Right. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, that might be a, a giveaway in the next couple of months. Mm. We'll, we'll see what happens. But. Mm. Yeah. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah. You one. wait all month again. Mm-hmm. And. <sighs> yep. Oh, thanks. That's how I felt about my March Geek Fuel. Uh-oh. I was not happy with February's Geek Fuel. Yes. It just was not for me. Mm-hmm. It didn't have my fandoms. Right. Got a power block. Okay, sure, fine. But everything else in it was kind of... Yeah. Again. <laughs> kind of happened again. Oh. So, I do love this shirt, though. Uh-huh. I almost wore it today. Okay. But I decided to go with a different one. So, this shirt is... A Guardians of the Galaxy shirt that has <laughs> Groot really and Rocket, cool. and then it has Rocket and Baby Groot. Yes, that's a cool one. It's a really that's neat a shirt. shirt. Yeah. yeah. So I'm happy with so that. So that's worth the price of admission. Right. So good on you. Because last month's shirt was just a shirt. It yeah. was just like, okay, fine, whatever. This month's pin is a Power Ranger pin, because mm. that came out, I guess, 
because we had to do that. You guys know how I feel about the boobs on the women's armor. I don't get it. Unnecessary. I don't want to see this movie. Wow, does that kid look a lot like Zac Efron? Like, yeah, he does. A couple somebody, times I'm like, are you related? Is he related to Zac Efron? If anybody knows, let us know. So you could get one of five pink, red, blue, yellow, black. What the is? green was the rare one. Whatever. Okay. As we all know. Jason David Frank is not that rare. He pops up at any convention. <laughs> always there. I'm pretty sure I could call him and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. You want to hang out? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want me to teach you sword play? I could teach you. T- <laughs> he is everywhere. I have been in, I have encountered that man more times in my life than I should have. And my favorite was when we walked past that demonstration he was having and we walked back. Like we walked past it like, what the fuck's going on in there? <laughs> and then backed up to look and they right. all looked at us like, uh, sorry, just had to see uh, what you were doing just curious relax <laughs> you don't have to look like you're gonna kill me <laughs> uh there's the geek fuel magazine which is fine and now our game of the week all right star Wars rogue a 12 dollar value this week last week's was only a five. Oh well so this is a 12 dollar value guys game upped yep so send us the code word rogue okay at back to sunny dale on back twitter to sunny and you can have that. Yep. Because I don't want it. I don't want any of them. None of them. And then I got some art, some Guardians of the Galaxy art. Fine, that's, whatever. That's cool. Guess. <laughs> I'm running out of space, seriously, yeah. for artwork. Like, I have to be really super picky about the artwork that I put up now. Yeah, because otherwise it's going to be overload and it's not... It's not it's cute. No longer a moti- it's no longer a motif or a design. It's like an obsession mm-hmm. or just clutter. Now I'm just hoarding. Yeah. And then the big item this week, it's fine. It's just, it's a magical elixir lamp. So it's shaped like a potion bottle. Okay. It's pretty. And it's like a lava lamp. It lights up and it changes color. Okay. And it's heavy. Like this, I they probably spent a lot oh, wow. of money getting these made. But again, it's just like, I did not ask nor want. <laughs> it was not a need in your life. No. But I do like that they send you housewares. Like, I have an awesome toothbrush holder. Remember yeah. that one? The dragon egg? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to give. It's cool. It's a Geek yeah. Fuel excu- exclusive. And it's just... You so, wait all month. Yeah, it's not something that you would have gone out and purchased no. yourself. No. And thanks to my new subscription addiction... Addiction with my subscription addiction. <laughs> the site. I already know what's coming for April, and I'm not happy about it either. That sucks. So that's three months in a row. You might have to pause them. We may have to pause and switch. Yeah. It might be time to check out the uh, BAM box, which I've been super excited about. BAM box. What's that? BAM box is just, it's another geek subscription box, but usually, like, every month includes, like, an autographed item. Oh. So... Yeah, I might have to like switch up <clears throat> to, or at least maybe I'll switch to like Nerdblocks T-shirt one. But something, uh, Nerd, one of the Nerdblocks had something cool this month. That said, so they have so many offshoots. It's weird. It's like why I know. do you have so many? Um, but if you guys don't know, go to my subscription addiction. We love them, mm-hmm. and you can see all the spoilers for all of your boxes because I love spoilers. I don't care. I hate spoilers. I don't. I love them. I like to open the box and be uh surprised or disappointed in person <laughs> and i like and to, not to be dreading it <laughs> yeah and i like to be either like super geek that it's coming or right. like fuck this thing is coming <laughs> and i don't like it how was yeah. your nerd block this month though <laughs> yeah see you can prepare the disappointment <laughs> a lot of giveaways this one in this box guys Ugh. a lot of giveaways that's upsetting starting with which is always usually my thing uh the t-shirt oh no when the t-shirt's bad that's yeah it's a transformer which i feel like you they have given you a lot of transformer yeah a devastator dev- nobody wants that i don't what i mean no i'm never ever in a million years going to wear this out in public no. or even no it just makes me mad this is yeah so at some way somehow i'm going to be giving away this ladies xl uh, Transformers t-shirt which kind of sucks because it's like real specific size and I hate to like just randomly give it away I'd yeah. much rather but I don't as a 41 year old woman I don't know anybody <laughs> my size who's going to be into Mm-mm. a Transformers t-shirt panel prize panel prize <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> um, there's also one of those like 
uh, collectible lapel pins. It's Marvel. I don't think I care enough to open it, Mm-mm. so I'll probably give it away. Oh, but it could be a little a little uh, Iron Man. I know, but I, I thought about that, but I don't know if I want it that much. Let's see if I... Yeah, they even they cover it up with cardboard there, so I can't even... You can't even cheat. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Hulk. That's, oh, right. Um, what? Why? <laughs> what are those? Is it a luggage tag? It's a I, Death Eater, but... It's called a buckle down. <laughs> Whatever. I don't... It's a... Oh. Okay. So, I think... Possibly. No. No. I have something similar that attaches my suitcase to my carry. Like my oh, okay. suitcase can clip to my gotcha. back like my backpack can clip to my suitcase. Mm. And I thought maybe that no. No, this is just like I don't know what that weird is. fucking keychain or thing or what's a death eater? A Harry Potter. Oh. It's a death eater. Sure. <clears throat> also, speaking of Power Rangers. <laughs> And the green Power Rangers. The Ranger green Power Rangers specifically. It's a green Power Rangers sippy cup. What are you or supposed to do with that? Or something. Why? Why would I want again, that? I don't know. <laughs> it comes with a straw. <laughs> wow! I want to get drunk and drink out of that. <laughs> Again, I don't know anybody personally that, that would want this. At first, I thought it was bubble bath. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's like, a, this is a full on just like Power I, Rangers yeah, head up, it, <laughs> up in my fucking face. <laughs> it looks like those bubble bath things. Oh, my goodness. And to go with it, there is a Power Rangers coaster set. No. <laughs> Get out of... <sighs> No would, one wants this stuff. <laughs> no, I would very much like for Nerd Block to start asking me what what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy. After a while, you're sending us boxes of trash. Right. And it's not, I'm not paying for boxes of right. trash. Like about four or five months ago, they sent out a questionnaire like, hey, we're going to start sending fucking phone cases. Mm-hmm. Would you like one? What kind of phone do you have? Fuck yeah. Where's that at? Right. I have I've yet to see one. I didn't click on the sippy cup. <laughs> I am uh, a sippy cup. That's a hard pass every time. Let's just put it out. That there. and it's big, guys. It's big. It's huge. It's at least three like, drinks. Not, like, what? <laughs> I am grown. I'm not carrying this around in my And this, I feel like you might enjoy this. I own that. Actually, I got it as a birthday present because I did. I did peek and see. I forgot that I peeked and saw what was in this box, and I forgot I own that book. So if I'd have got this nerd block, I'd have been pissed <laughs> because it's a big book. It is. It's the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. So I mean, I have made things out of it. Well, shit! I think you're the only person mm-hmm. that I knew that maybe would have enjoyed this. I was so mad. I'm like, really? I mm. yeah, I got it as a birthday present one year. Okay, so I would definitely, we'll definitely post this on. We'll probably do some sort of Facebook contest for this yeah. one, because um, this is a good book for it's a anybody good book. who who likes the sort of who likes Harry Potter. It's a it's a good book. Yeah, and it, the stuff the I've New made York Times bestseller. I've made recipes out of it. It's good, but I just don't care enough to uh, have this. If around. you like British cooking, it's a lot of really authentic British recipes and yeah. stuff like that. So we'll just be on the lookout for that. Make sure to like our Facebook page, Revisiting Sunnydale, and I'll make sure to do some stuff with that. So yeah. And oh, now Nerd Block is starting to do little magazines. We don't read them, guys. Nope. I look at the pictures. Total waste of time. There's a whole bunch of stuff about Power Rangers. And. So do me a favor, guys. If anyone has seen the Power Rangers movie, tweet us your. Honest opinion? Honest opinion, quick review. Let us know how it is, because I have no desire to see it. Yeah. Except I kept trying to win free passes for some reason. I don't know why. Because I like a free movie. <laughs> I do. So I guess April's theme is dress to kill. So does that mean Bond? Archer? Not stuff I want. I mean, I need you guys to be more specific with these themes because I I need to know if I need to cancel. I feel like they're giving you a lot of things that you can turn into paraphernalia. Yes. Because didn't they give you that can with like Tina Belcher's head on it the one time? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys are are trying to uh, get me to smuggle and Mm -hmm. like hide away some contraband and things. That's what that Power Ranger thing is. It's like the shaving thing, the shaving can from (laughs) Jurassic Park that has the hideaway spot. So I just paid like 30 bucks for nothing. Yeah. 
Awesome. Not even a fucking t-shirt. Right. So my last one is new. And if you guys have been following our little blog posts every month. Star Wars. I've been into Star Wars hardcore lately. Oh, before I forget, there's like a Doctor Who special nerd block box Ooh. for April that you can order. It's not like a subscription, but it's just like one for a special, it, so. like a one-off. I yeah. may want to order that. So hmm. just so you know. So this is Smuggler's Bounty. It is a Star Wars pop box that comes oh. out bi-monthly. Exciting. Yes. Just Star Wars? Yeah. This huh. is just Star Wars. Bi-monthly. Bi-monthly. I don't know how long I'll keep it because I'm going to be like drowning in Star Wars pops after a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I've been really into Star Wars Rebels. Okay. Which is the animated show. Okay. Yes. And they just had their season three finale. Mm-hmm. And I tweeted how much I liked it and how great Freddie Prince Jr. was. Oh, he's voicing it? Uh-huh. He's <laughs> the voice of Kanan and he liked my tweet. Uh, I was so excited. Aww. I love it. It's just a nice little way for fans to interact with celebrities that it's like... You should ask him to be on the show. I should. I, should. Just for, just for I like him. He's, he's grown into such a great man. Like, mm-hmm. he's just a really... He's a good dude. Yeah. And him and Sarah seem to have, like, a really good marriage and a happy life. I know. And apparently he can cook. It shatter my world if anything happens I know. between them. Wrong. I know. Like, if they break up. He has a cookbook that I kind of want to buy. He has a cookbook? He has a cookbook. He can cook, apparently. Yeah. Why? Um, mm-hmm. How long has this cookbook been out? Why haven't right? we been talking about it? I know. It? So I kind of want to get this cookbook. It's going to go on my wish list. I got a birthday coming up. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> but so he voices uh, Kanan Jars on Star Wars Rebels. And it's on Disney XD. You can watch it. You can buy it on Amazon Prime. I recommend it. I love it. So when they announced that the theme for the March um, Smuggler's Bounty was going to be Star Wars Rebels, I immediately was like, I must have this. Mm -hmm. So this is our first foray into Smuggler's Bounty. Right off the bat, when you open the box, every month you get a patch and a pin. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's very cool. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all these patches and their character patches, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So Zeb, uh, I believe, Zeb Aurelius is on the patch. Oh, back He's to a cool the kitchen. Character. 75 delicious real recipes and true foods from a food obsessed. And it looks good. Like he. Actor. It looks really good. Oh, bless his little heart. The pin is uh, Sabine's helmet. And she's another character on the show who's awesome. Mm-hmm. Strong female characters. We love them. Yes. Here's their little info card. Oh, and wow. Then, this is the one you got in the box? Yeah. So okay. I got two pops that I absolutely adore. One is Captain Rex. He's They're both Smuggler's Bounty exclusives. So the first one is the number 164 Captain Rex and the 165 Darth Maul. Nice. Love them. And then there's a chopper. He's a little droid on the show, and he's apparently something you call a Hikari, which I have no idea what these are. <laughs> They're one of five. Not sure if I'll keep it. It may end up like a paperweight on my desk. Right. Um, it would be it's great if he was cute. a candy jar. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. That would make much more sense. And then. The shirt. Great shirt, so, by the way. I wore the shirt today. Yes. And it's a Funko shirt of the Star Wars Rebels, and it's adorable. It's great. It's so cute. Whoops. All right. It's my pretty. All right. So, I'm happy with it. I'm very happy yeah. with it. Good How much is this one? It's a little more expensive. It's like, what, three mm. Funkos and a shirt? Yeah. And patch so and pen. Like, I think it was like thirty five or something. That's not bad. It's but like bi monthly. Yeah. yeah. So the next one won't come won't be out until May or something, I think. And it's fortieth anniversary, so I had to get it. Right. Because you know they're gonna put something it's the fortieth anniversary of New Hope. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. And so uh with Carrie Fisher dying, I'm sure. There's gotta be. There's gonna be a special edition there Leia has Funko. There's to be. And I can't not be a part of that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to. I have to have it. So I'm very happy with that. That was a great, great box. Yeah, that's a good one. It made up for the kind of shitty Geek Fuel. Now, what is that a loot crate or Geek Fuel or is that just its, its own Funko. thing? It's Funko. Okay. It's Funko. It's, I think, done by Funko. Okay. And it's just Smuggler's Bounty. They also have a Marvel one. Oh, really? And I think they have a Disney Princess theme one, too. Hmm. But yeah, it's great. You guys can go to smugglersbounty.com, I think is the website. And it's really 
I'm I'm happy with it. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, at least you got something that you really enjoyed. Yeah. In your boxes. I know. And I can't wait to get them home and put them on the shelf. <laughs> they will they will stay in their boxes. So I'm starting to Yeah, speaking of that, I'm starting to um think about removing some of my guys out of the boxes. I took out uh Bender from Breakfast Club and he's just kind of chilling. Um, I've decided anything that comes with a label that says exclusive, like a Loot Crate exclusive, right. they stay in the box because they could be worth money someday. Right. My Harry Potters, they all because they're the market is flooded with them. They're right. not going to be special. No. You know. So, I mean, I'm not sure. I think the next one to come out, I might take the Peanuts guys out because mm-hmm. I've got like all of them that they have available. So I'll probably take them out and like put them in a scene or something. So. Yeah. And then that's really... what I did with my Harry's, and I'm really happy with it. And yeah. It looks super cute. And it's at some point you have to say, I'm not going to beanie baby this. Right. I'm not going to vacuum happen. seal them. You know, a couple of them, they'll stay in their boxes. They will, but some I want to enjoy. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, before we get into the graduation, there's like um, three Buffy birthdays that are happening this week. Nicholas Brendan. Happy birthday. His birthday is April 12th. Um... Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. Like, it was uh, so good spending time with you. I know. Thank you for sitting with us. Seriously. Again. It was really fun. You are, this is like, out of all the hours that I've spent watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer in my life, I never in a million years would have guessed that I would have become friends with no. one of the main Scoobies, Nicholas the Brendan. Mm-hmm. And um, you are a treat and a treasure mm-hmm. to this world and uh, it can only pray your, for your continued success and everything you do you're a pure talent and I just hope you see that and know that and um, you know thing you will everybody else will realize it as well mm-hmm. and and Netflix you're you're big on the uh, revival yeah. uh, reboot thing yeah. can I get some kitchen confidential love word bring it back word it didn't get a fair shot no that I mean, I know, I know the, the B. Cooper may be busy, but he doesn't have to be in it. I don't think he's that busy now. Mm. I mean, this, he might have. He, might he have, has time for uh, Wet Hot American Summer. I'm sure he yeah, could throw in exactly, this a quick was, little, I'm a, I'm a huge chef now. Exactly, bye. Exactly. That's all we need. John Cho. Right. not that busy. Mm-mm. Dude, Bones has just ended. Right. And I'm pretty sure, I think I heard that his character died off anyway. A couple seasons ago. Yeah. So. You're free. Yeah. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Kitchen Confidential is a shit. It was so funny. It was so. such a good... And that tall guy that was on... Oh, that guy. That British guy? <sighs> He's oh. not busy. His show ended, too. Yeah. What was he on? He was on The Mentalist. Okay. Yeah. Your show ended, too. Yep. We got some time, guys. Just mm-hmm. one... Like, like 12 episodes. Yeah. That's I all will, I'm asking I for. I will be happy with that. Mm-hmm. If you guys have not watched Kitchen Confidential, find, find it, it. Wherever it is. Yeah. You it's... can probably YouTube it. YouTube it. I'm pretty sure, like, there was only one season, and I think you could probably find buy that for, like, less than $15. Yeah, it's got to be super inexpensive to it's own, like and discs. it's worth it. Yeah. If you've never seen the app called Fan TV, mm. it's a wonderful thing. And it... So you know how you're sitting around, and you're like, what? where can I find that? Where can right. I watch it? So you just go to Fan TV, and you type in Kitchen Confidential... And it will tell you everywhere really? that it's available. Interesting. So here's Kitchen Confidential. We can yeah, it's on Hulu. play. Yeah, apparently it is. All right. We can watch it on the web on Hulu or we can play it on nice. Hulu. So I don't know if I actually believe that. So we're going to go to Hulu <laughs> now and see if Fan TV was telling you know, us the truth. I feel like Hulu, the word Hulu has come out of my mouth more often in these past couple hours than it should have. Um, it is on Hulu. It is on Hulu. Fuck me. Go to it's Hulu, guys. It's going to my wish, my watch list right now. Do it, guys. Go watch it. Um, it's such a good show, you guys. Seriously. We need to contact Hulu about sponsorship because. Yeah. <laughs> we have said Hulu quite a bit. All my favorite stuff is here now. Right. <laughs> you could like at least give me the, the commercial free. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I need to. I'm watching Kitchen Confidential tomorrow. That's yeah. what I'm doing tomorrow. Yeah. That's my day. Mm-hmm. Also, this week celebrating a birthday, Sarah Michelle Keller. Yes, which, uh, you know, at first I was like, this food stirs things. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> what a weird venture for someone. But the more I read into it, like uh-huh. for someone who's gone, who's had such a varied background, right. I'm like, <laughs> Huh? I'm not exactly sure I understand like what the n- it's healthy niche is. 
good stuff that you can cook that with you your can kids? bake that you can okay, yeah it's baking. so it's baking okay but i think it's like all natural okay you know you know food stores if you want to send us a box we'd be more yeah. than happy or to even review just it a fucking book or the, yes you have a cookbook have actually a cookbook. The, the food stores so, has a cookbook hey how about this you guys send us if anybody has any connections out there whatsoever i don't know if it's going to get into the right hands but here goes we would love a copy of the food stores cookbook mm-hmm. and or freddie prince jr's cookbook yes what we will do for exchange with that is we will record videos yes making making stuff. the stuff we will mm-hmm. we will go ahead and sign on to at least five recipes yeah that we will go ahead and cook Especially okay. baking, because I don't like to bake. And I need all of the mm. instructions mm-hmm. I need for baking. Yeah. Like, I follow those recipes to the T. Yes. Because that's and I tend baking, to read out of order. Baking is a science. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up with a trifle like Rachel made on Friends <laughs> when I bake. That's because I do tend to skip ahead. Seriously. Yeah. That happens with my home chefs. I'll be cooking along, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, here we – where was the ginger supposed to go? <laughs> I was supposed to saute it like, like five steps ago. Okay. That's, that's okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So, um, or if, you know, one of you guys out there, one of you fans will want to buy it for us and send mm-hmm. it to us, contact me and I'll tell you what to ship it. Yeah. But either way. Or even if you, any of you guys out there have a subscription box thing that you do and you right. need someone to help you right. review it and you want to get it off the ground, but you need a tester. Let us know. We'll test. Send us an email, revisiting yep. Sunnydale at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. We will review. We will play test. Or slide in our DMs on yeah. Twitter at Back to Sunnydale. We'll help you out. It's a community. Yes. Help us help you. Help yes. us. Also, happy birthday, Christy. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Happy birthday, Sarah Happy, happy birthday, Sarah Michelle. <laughs> Buffy. Um, I hope it's a great one. And um, I hope you're, you guys are celebrating awesomely. Also, oh, they're going to have fun. They're going to cel- Star Wars Celebration, which I'm super oh, jealous really? about. Oh, I wish right. I could. Yeah, I'm super jealous that I can't go. Where is it? In Orlando, mm. like my favorite place in the world. That's got to hurt. Freddie will be there. That's got to Sarah hurt. will be there. Yeah. Everyone from Star Wars will be there. Yeah. She's like, I've said it before, I don't need her to complete the wall. But it would be nice. She would be my crown center. Right Since now. you're Moby Dick, you're your white whale. I know. I am planning on going to Star Wars Celebration probably in 2019. Okay. Um. So come back, please. How often do they have it? Just Every like... couple years. Okay. Like, they didn't do one last year. They're okay. doing one this year. And I don't think they're doing one next year, but they'll do one, you know. Gotcha. But please, <laughs> I'll pay the $150, I'm sure. Yikes. I know I will. I won't want to, but I know I'll get there and be like, because oh it's gonna be like, like right. I'm never gonna see her again. Exactly. It's like a serious <sighs> once in a lifetime mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if I were to act like, I don't give enough credit to the character of Buffy, mm-hmm. nor do I give enough credit to Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if I were to meet her in person, I might get a little verklempt. I might. Just a little. Yeah. Because everything would hit me at once. Probably yeah. I realize she is the force behind my favorite right. thing in the world. Right. Like the thing I spend so much time on. And I have never shed a tear over celebrity. Mm-mm. Like meeting them. Like sure, like death of a celebrity, but never meeting them have I ever No, I've gotten I, weird a couple times. I've got oh I've gotten definitely gotten weird. Um <laughs> a little bit awkward. Uh <laughs> the weird net kiss like, on <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna live that down, but it's so funny. It's I don't I'm sorry, Norman Reedus. I really am. <laughs> It was awkward. All I can say, I mean, there are just certain celebrity men that um, it's probably best I never ever meet. Ryan Gosling, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean, Dean Morgan, Morgan. <laughs> Idris and, Elba, ooh, Jason Dean. Momoa. I can't be held. I, I will say I cannot be held responsible for what happens. Right. Because I'm not saying. I'm going to black out I'm and I won't remember it anyway. I'm not saying that I'm going to <laughs> jump on them and probably no. hump a little bit. I'm not saying that that's going to absolutely happen. Right. But I'm, I'm not, not going to hurt you. saying that it's not. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, I'm probably gonna, just going to stand there and giggle a lot. Uh, Hopefully after I've walked away. I mean, I don't know. I was like, I got real weird with Ryan Hurst. <laughs> like. I was like, I wasn't expecting it. Like, I got weird. Like, <laughs> And part of that is them, too. It's how they react to you. Right. Like, Michael Cudlitz, it's like being with a friend that you, right. you know. Right, and that was great. But you're like, like, yeah, you're cool. Also, What's up? my uh, Rooker. Yeah. Like, mm. don't come at me like that, bro. Because, like. You're grabby. I know. And then. I know, can't be I'm held like, responsible for my response. I know. Mm, you're doing, you're hitting all the right spots right now. Mm-hmm. But also. Yeah, He's grabby. He is. But, yeah, Ryan Hurst, like, I was like. 
it was a flutter inside my chest and I don't but I I almost, I almost came to tears with uh, Ralph Macchio mm-hmm. because that was like you know like very first like one of my very first crushes in my life and yeah. I finally met him and it's just like <laughs> Sean Patrick Flannery I was just like hey he could get it he could have got hey. it he almost and he's super flirty too so it's like I, I, okay girl this is why I love yeah everything so glad that I was with my husband at the time when I met him because I it would have been a different story mm-hmm. what it had happened was because mm-hmm. he got all up in like we were at an after party and he started he's like he just grabs him's like hey what's up and he grabs me and like kisses me on the cheek and I'm You're like, like ah! I need you to walk away right now please you're on my list I know as you've been I've been watching you for years bro so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure my husband might be okay he might forgive it he maybe. might just maybe I've got five you're not laminated like Ross but I've got five <laughs> Jason Momoa. Oh, that's yeah. Seriously, that's a blackout situation. I don't he even climbs know. up that list a mm-hmm. little higher and higher every year. And it, it, I mean, it gets rough because you know I respect Lisa Bonet as a person. I, I am very much jealous of her and her lifestyle and um, mm-hmm. uh, what she has managed to accomplish. Who she has managed to accomplish? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, that's a rough one. He might get licked. He might. <laughs> That's, he might get licked. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was totally I, worth it. I And and trust <laughs> trust us when we say we would be as surprised as you are <laughs> right. by what we do. Oh. Um. <laughs> as I was with Norman Reedus and the weird neck kiss. Even I was like, why? Why did I just do that? I don't that's what I, it happens that's what you I, do. with Tommy Flanagan from Sons of Anarchy. Oh. Like when I hugged him, I went in for the hug, <laughs> and I was like, and I don't think that's what I was supposed to have done. And I was like, it was just like I imagined. You're like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I am but a woman. I, I don't know what <laughs> happened. <laughs> Everything's just kind of take over. My and- emotions and hormones just. I'm telling you, and if Jeffrey Dean Morgan is a quarter Negan, just a quarter Negan, we're done. I'm taking it. It's over. Off. Mm-hmm. It's over. Don't Sorry. be charming. Don't be. Please be. Just be a dick. Yeah, please. That's what I. <laughs> for everybody's safety. <laughs> just be a dick. <laughs> just never look up at me. Mm-hmm. Just sign my name and mm. just never make eye contact because I, I tell you right now, one little thing and I'm climbing. Okay, so we're going to clear out. <laughs> Hold my pants. <laughs> Normally it's hold my purse. Right. Nope. Hold my pants. Why is Camila under the table? What? what? <laughs> I don't know. I, mean. I dropped my pencil. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also, happy birthday, Christine Sutherland. Yes. Mama Joyce. Happy birthday. You're a neglectful mother, but <laughs> you're the mother we got. <laughs> and we do love you. Actually, we, we shed quite a few tears. Oh, damn, girl. Ooh. I may have almost thrown up, actually. Right. I, mm, uh, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get through that episode, guys, but we'll get through it together. A lot of whiskey. Mm -hmm. Um, Graduation Day, part one. Season three, episode 22. Original air date, May 18th, 1999. Written by Joss Whedon. Directed by Joss Whedon. In an effort to distract Buffy from the Ascension, the mayor instructs Faith to poison Angel. Worst plan ever. Yep. Important guest star, Angel. Eliza Dushku as Faith. Uh, Harry Groner as... Is he related to any of the groaners that have anything to do like with the Simpsons? Simpsons groaner? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's groaning. Harry Groner is Mayor Richard Wilkins and Alexis Demsoff is Wesley Wyndham Price. <laughs> Pricey. Pricey. It's graduation fever. Yeah. What? Okay. So what is graduation fever? Did you get it when you were? Because we start off the episode with everyone in Sunnydale except for Buffy is all like, well, we're graduating. I'm so excited. Even like Willow and Harmony have this weird. Fuck her. You hate her. <laughs> right. Fuck that bitch. Even like, which I think Buffy even says, don't you hate she's her? She's like, oh, with a fiery vengeance. <laughs> she fucking tortured me for yes. most of my life. So why is she signing your yearbook? Yeah, it was a whole, oh, sign my yearbook. Oh, you have to do, oh, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to know you. Oh, we should hang out totally. No. Please no. tell me she was a, that Willow wrote, fuck you. She was a cockface whore. <laughs> and I hope she wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> she so, does call her something. She said, what did she, a tramp of some sort? No, yes. maybe, Is it, maybe not. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Though. But um, I don't know. I didn't get it in that sense where I was like, oh, fucking enemy that I, I hate yeah. that's tortured my life I'm gonna miss you fuck no. you she's like I'm gonna miss P.E. 
No, I never got all nostalgic yeah. like that. It was like, all right, I'm ready. I'm out of here. <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And yeah. I never looked back. Yeah. I was never. I couldn't wait. I was, I was pretty done for the most part. Yeah. I mean, and like, I mean, I went to two of my reunions, but like the 20th one's the last one I'll ever go to. I didn't go to any of them. It's probably best. Like no it was one, weird. they like, were lazy and they got canceled. Actually, oh really? People didn't want to sell tickets, and you know, you have a reunion. Don't ask me to do shit. I'm just supposed to show up, what? right? There's a committee for that, isn't? Like, why are you asking me to sell tickets? You were supposed to sell tickets. They wanted the, the like they uh, wanted everyone to sell so to many. Who? To, uh, that's what I was like. For what? If everyone is selling, it's like tickets. a butcher raffle. I don't understand what's happening. If everyone's selling tickets. They were raffle tickets. Oh. To pay for the parts. Isn't this? Or. Pretty sure this is not how this works. No. Like, how about this? We just pick a spot if we want to reune and just like, just hang out there. Just go to a bar and just go hang out. Like, we don't need a bunch of ballroom and do it. Crap. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I'm over it. uh, Especially with like Facebook. You know, I don't need it. I know what you're doing. I know. I know too much. So it's super awkward when you finally get face to face and you don't really want to catch up or Mm -hmm. you don't have to because for some reason I am Facebook friends with you because you felt the need to add me and I felt the need to go ahead and accept it because I didn't want to be rude. Now, there are a couple people where I'm like, yeah, I totally want to see what you're up to. We were super tight. But there are a few people from high school where I'm like, why am I? Because I just want to see what you're doing, I guess. Like, yeah. Like the there was never... The people that I really wanted to see were never really there. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't there at my 20th. So it was like maybe four people that I really wanted to see and they weren't there. No. So I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this again in my 50s, in my 60s. No. Like, no. And there's a couple people that they're like, we went to school. I'm friending you. And I'm like, what the why? Fuck? I've had to go to a, a yearbook or two uh, like a couple times yeah. to be like, who is this person? They claim to go have gone to school. And then even then it's like... <sighs> And then you get the Marcy Ross and you're like, <laughs> you're invisible. I'm so sorry. And then after that episode, I did actually look at my ear. How many nice summers did I do I have? I have a nice summer. <laughs> and I don't. Mine are actually, and I just looked at them the other day. You, I almost pulled yeah. mine out. Well, Raven and I were, it was the something, something anniversary for Breakfast Club. Mm. And there was like a shot of the faculty on the wall uh-huh. and we were like oh those faculty pictures are so stupid what were our so we started going through ours to uh, see what the faculty pictures look like and I started reading some of the stuff and gotcha yeah. hey, let me see if I have this on, I have it on the shelf up here everybody has that friend that took up an entire page with their yeah. you know it was really fun to read some of them and kind of nostalgic and it was cute no, I guess I think mine are downstairs I only have one I only got my senior one. Yeah, I just got junior and senior year. They're think, expensive. They were. And I think, like, our um, freshman year, we had, like, a supplement or something. So mm. it was, like, just, like, this little fucking paper magazine kind of thing. That yeah. We signed. But, uh, so, yeah. So, graduation fever. And um, Xander's starting to feel some kind of way worried that this might be his last battle. He's freaking out. He thinks that, um, you know, he's he's had too many close calls. Mm-hmm. This might be it for old Xander. Yep. The Xan man. And Cordelia makes a comment that I've never understood. Sunnydale's colors have always been maroon and gold. And she makes a comment that she lobbied so hard for the teal. What teal? What teal? Why were you lobbying for teal that's not, has never been a school color? No. Why would you have teal? Why were you lobbying for it? Like, just why? Cordy, you got to pick and choose, like, better battles. Right. Like, this is, that's the fight? That's the mountain you want to die on? With all the stuff you got going on? <laughs> you don't even have a home. Of where are you? Li- are you right. living in your car, which they probably took back, so you're not living in right. the car. Where are you living? Yes. Next to Anya, apparently, in this ghost motel. <laughs> Some imaginary fucking <laughs> castle. So we do get a very adorable s- scene between the mayor and Faith. And is it just me, or their relationship really kicked up? It kicked up like a knot. Like, it yeah. like really, like, pushed up. Because get- in choices, he was like, yes, you're cute, you're cute, but I will fucking fire you right. and kill you. Right. Don't disappoint me. Yeah. But this Here, one... he's all 
dad tender. like yeah and sweet and he bought her a dress like mm-hmm. this very flowery delicate and very 90s and she's freaked out dress and she's like awkward and uncomfortable in it and she looks so small mm-hmm. in it it's it's really a trip like yeah. how much of a difference the wardrobe makes she's not wearing shoes like she's barefoot and she's got this real girly dress on mm-hmm. and she's just very awkward and uncomfortable and self-conscious about it and he bought it for her to wear to graduation oh, right because he needs her there yeah so she was just going to probably hang out in the section in the back and then guess. murder a bunch of people in this really pretty dress. <laughs> Which her apartment, I know we've seen it before, but her apartment's awesome. It is. It's pretty badass. Yeah. Um, so no wonder she has so much loyalty to him because yeah. the Scoobies didn't even invite her. One dinner she had at one, Buffy's house. One very awkward dinner. Mm-hmm. And it was like, uh, was it? Joyce's idea mm-hmm. and Buffy's like oh I don't want to do it and she's stealing my fries because uh, she's hungry <laughs> she's destitute she's one step above homeless right living in that flea motel where people screw a lot and so yeah so the mayor's being like real tender and nice to her and he's just he's doting on her yeah. all about you know being a girly girl and whatnot. I guess before this not being a girly girl, but um, that she's special and that, you know, she's like, it's not me. And he's like, you don't really know mm-hmm. who you are and nobody knows who you are. Like, he's trying to tell her that she has potential. Yeah. And she's not seeing it. Potential to be a crazy lunatic mass murderer, but he and still believes in her. <laughs> and she's very concerned that, like, sh- he'll still need her in there. Right. You know, and he's like, no, I still, I do. I need you. Yes. And that's all she... T- Someone needs her. And that's all it would have taken, Buffy. Right. Right. Not making her feel like she was the sidekick or the just because she was the other slayer. She was an offshoot. She was, you know, not necessary. That she was just like, oh, we've got a slayer. You know, in case we, we need a backup, we'll go ahead and call you. Bad on the council for not being like, uh, no, the tradition is slayer dies. Next one takes over. Fuck you, Buffy. Right. You can be part time slayer. Right. We got faith. Exactly. That was that was kind of the council's fault. Yeah. Because she was. She was active. She's like, this is my Right. Not mine. <laughs> Nothing is mine. I fit in nowhere. Right. I'm going to kill things. Yeah. Yeah. So the council, as we have seen, is just... Fu- they're terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, they do the worst job ever. Like, it'd be better off without them because they do nothing but yeah. muck things up yep. with their antiquated rules. So before this, uh, Faith goes to uh, see this Professor Worth guy. And she's, like, ready to kill him. She's got the bloodlust, and he's just, like... Gross! Got lust. He's just gross. She's like, you know, are we alone here, Lester? He's like, "Mm, well, I'm a bachelor. Lifelong bachelor. (laughs) You're on a watch list, (laughs) is what you are. Because I got... It got creepy real fast. Real fast. Yeah. You you just, you just switched that flip on, right? Like you didn't even But okay. I love that she pulls out the knife and she's he's like, I'll scream. Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feel free. Go. Still gonna kill you. Go for it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> gonna kill you. She kills him. He's a volcano volcanist. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes he studies a volcanologist. <laughs> yeah, he's a volcanologist. <laughs> he says volcans. I love that. <laughs> studies volcanoes and we don't find out until much much later in the episode why he was a threat to the mayor i'm still not exactly sure why i don't i don't <laughs> he was a threat to the mayor. he uncovered bones yeah that's what it was he uncovered a skeleton the right. demon skeleton which he wasn't telling anybody about it it was already out where what he wasn't actively saying you can kill the demon if you kill it. He didn't know what was what he saw. Like he found it, but he didn't. Yeah, you didn't need to kill him. It was unnecessary. It, it was, was completely unnecessary. unnecessary. Oh, this is just <laughs> you're being excessive now. She needs to kill something. Let her kill. I guess let right because now all you've done is alerted everyone right to the fact there was something to know. As what you know, was or Buffy Buffy's, yeah points out, and then Wesley points out. <laughs> Um, and she's like, and then Buffy points out that she pointed out mm-hmm. th- all right, that already. So it, there's, you remember the end of the year? This I do remember. The end of the year when you really didn't want to be in class anymore. You have nothing else to do. Nothing else Everything to do. Everything is turned yes. in. You're You've senior. You've gotten your final grades. Yeah. There's an, and your teacher just won't fucking just, quit. What? 
<laughs> why are we playing hangman? Why can't I just sit here and read or right. leave? Right. Or, like, just fuck off. So what really bugs me about this scene as I was rewatching it again this week is um, Xander and Anya are not using their inside voices. They're not. That bothers me. And it also bothers me how dismissive he is of her. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all just went to prom. Right. He's just imagined. like, fuck you. Stop talking to me. Right. Um, And it was probably just like a couple days ago. Like, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, the weekend before. Whatever. I'm sure it was no more than a week. So, why are you being an asshole right now? Sure, you've got shit on your mind, but he yeah. wasn't even going to say hello when he right. rolled in. And she is just... She wants. She's badgering. She wants the D. She wants the from D pretty the bad. X. Yeah. <laughs> she wants it pretty bad. She's like, we'll go out. Well, men like sports. I know they do. She's really. Trying. Have you ever talked to Xander? Xander's not a sports guy. She's trying so hard. Do you have a checklist? Boobs, sports. This means we like each other. <laughs> but here's the thing, like. Anya is actually all of us. She really is. <laughs> she is. She really is. <laughs> she is that. She's the typical. I don't even want to just say teen, just teenage girl, but Mm-mm. just like young girl in love slash like. Mm-hmm. They're just saying all the wrong things or doesn't know what exactly to say. Just trying any and everything. Just, just like me, love me. Just, and in just your in something. your brain, you're going shut the fuck right. up. Why are you still talking? <laughs> saying all the wrong yes. things. Yes, and you know you're doing it. And you're just I can't stop. It's word vomit. It won't stop. I'm so embarrassed. And you want to kill yourself, <laughs> but you're just like throwing any and everything yeah. out there. Something will stick, surely. Like there's yes, and and finally he's like finally he realizes he's being a dick, and he's like, all right, because she was like, you don't have to bite my head off, right? And he was like, oh, and he yeah, comes, I am kind of being comes a dick. clean, yeah. Like if I survive the ascension, I'm preoccupied. We'll do Her face, <laughs> yep. She's just like, well, huh? Um, let's use what now? Sorry, I'm sorry. You used the the a word, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. ascension. You say, mm-hmm. She's been to one. She knows all about it. And it's not a loving. No. It's not a good time. No. So uh, Xander takes her to the Scoobies and lets her uh, tell her tale. Mm-hmm. Which I Central. love right before they walk in. <laughs> That's when Buffy is holding up like the newspaper and she's like, Professor found dead. Right. And Giles and Wesley are sparring. Yes. With swords. And he's like reading the, you know, she hands Giles the thing and... <laughs> Wesley, like, taps the ground with his sword, like, let's go. <laughs> so Giles continues to read. <laughs> and fence. And fence. And not even look at Wesley. That's such a good It's kind of hot. It is. It's kind of hot. Um, Anthony Stewart had. Yeah. And, you, um, you can get it. Yeah. Yep. So then in walks, they're talking about, you know, the Ascension and what they're going to do. And Xander's like, you want to talk Ascension? Meet the only alive <laughs> right. person that's been to one. Yep. So... Welcome to the Scooby Gang. Yes, Anya, Anya. has unofficially joined the Scooby Gang at this point because she's got some info to share. Mm-hmm. And she immediately offends Buffy. Cool. She's like, you've never seen a demon. Um, I beg excuse your pardon? Me? Nah, bitch. Uh, 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 you've never seen a demon. A full-bled, 100% mm-hmm. demon demon. You've seen the tainted mm-hmm. half-breeds walking the earth that are like cross-pollinated with humans and whatnot, but you've never seen a pure demon. Mm-hmm. And then you don't want to. Apparently not. Nope. They're they're, they're big and they're gross and yep. they're evil and they're they're deadly. And she makes a point of saying, for, for one thing, they're bigger. Yeah. Which we find out later yeah. when Giles finds a picture in the book. Of Overcon, the one that, yep, multiple pages. Yes. A, a nice fold out, a spread, if you will. Which, why was this book on the shelf? I don't know. Why did why did Giles intermix his, and Xander even says, it's a good thing no one wanted to check this book out, huh? Which, yeah. I mean, you never know, like, who you would have, I just once, I would have liked a scene or like, oh, that book's checked out. And mm-hmm. then they go find and search out who checked it yeah. out. And it was Andrew. Or Jonathan, right. because at some point they do end up learning magic stuff, and that's where they got it. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm ninety nine percent sure. Yeah, it's Giles's fault. Yep. And so they're having a little confab in the library, and I love the scene out in the courtyard where they're getting ready for graduation, and the mayor is talking to Snyder. And he's like, "You've done such a good job. You know, you're, we're going to pay, pay you pay back. back. Pay that check in full." Um, I'm good. I'm suddenly very afraid, and I quit. I quit. I quit. That's right. I quit. <laughs> How much does Snyder actually know? That's what I've always part. been curious about. Because he knows the mayor's what? not good. Right, but does he know that he plans to ascend? I don't think so, because he seems very shocked when it happens. 
<laughs> and a little just put out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is not. Yeah. He's not happy about it. So then the mayor is just tooling around school and he just walks into the library and has a little confrontation with our heroes and says something disgusting about Buffy. The that whole such the villainous way, mm-hmm. like like Harry Groner, man. He it's really so gross. <laughs> this role is this when he says, "I'm oh yeah," it's he's a like a little, spunky little spunky. girl you've raised. I'm going to eat her. So Giles stabs him through the chest with his fencing sword. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> he's a little put off by it. like, hey, yeah. um, you are not setting a very good example for the kids. Uh-huh. And just- can we just give? Oz a little shout out because the second the mayor walked into the room he immediately put his arms up in front of Willow and stood in front of her Yeah, Xander I'm pretty sure was under the desk like (laughs) did he go away? Is he gone now? I don't even know where Wesley went (laughs) he keeps just gone he was in the room previously (laughs) (laughs) where the hell did he (laughs) Wesley Wesley. (laughs) but I do every single time if we look back over like the course of the show if you kind of look at it Every single time she's in danger, he immediately shields like he just steps in front of her. And he's such a little wee man. I like know. season four is going to be so hard. That's another time that I actually shed real. T- <laughs> well, no, I mean, Allison Hannigan. Yeah. Allison, anytime she cries, I cry. It's like Claire Danes. Yeah. Except I've never watched Homeland I've never watched it either. I don't think I can because she does make me cry when she cries, but they like say she, she cries 90% of that yeah, show. Yeah, I feel like she cries a lot. Like I feel like after a while you're like in the trailers. Girl. That's I always see her crying in the trailers for the show. Enough. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got it. Let me reminisce about little women <laughs> and Romeo and Juliet when you were good at crying. But Allison Hannigan, she just and that I don't know how we're gonna do that episode either. That's like full on like heavy tears that Al- you can hear them actually drop yeah. to the floor. Yeah. That Allison Anakin cries. Um, some crocodile tears, not like the pinch my cheeks, stab yeah. myself in the thigh with a <laughs> <pen>. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Um So yeah, so uh, the mayor comes through and <laughs> makes some threats. Picks up their book. <laughs> oh, the lamb will lie with that. That's, that's kind of sweet. I love him. He's such a great villain. He's so good. He's so good. So good. Like, he's clearly, I want to say he would be this, my second best uh, big bad. Yeah. My second favorite big bad. Yeah. Uh, which reminds me, we have, did you rank your? No, I wanted to do it live. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Great. All right. So we will be ranking our season threes today on mm-hmm. this episode as well. All right. So after that goes down. We have a great scene. <laughs> it's one of my favorites, actually, where, so Joyce comes home. <laughs> after the confrontation with the mayor and finding out that the mayor is their commencement speaker. Mm-hmm. We have found out earlier in the episode right. he is their commencement speaker. Uh, Buffy decided that Joyce does not need attend, to attend graduation. So Joyce comes home and Buffy is furiously packing. <laughs> and she was like, what, you're running away again? You're taking, taking my, my clothes? clothes? <laughs> Stop assuming I'm running away. This is like the fifth time this season. Right. Just because I'm packing doesn't mean I'm running away. Can we just say, what's going on? Right. (laughs) You can hold this over my head forever. (laughs) Yes, I ran away. (laughs) Let it go. No, I want you out of town. Yes, because Buffy's like, you know, please don't come to graduation. Shit's going to get raw and you're going to get me killed. I do love what she's like. What, is some demon going to attack the school? (laughs) Oh, that's... And she's she, 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 like a mom. She's just like, oh, Buffy, you know what? <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> your life is terrible. It really. I, I hate your life. Yeah. I hate oh, your life. Oh, I hate your life. <laughs> Somehow I blame, I blame your father. Right. I, I, this is really Hank's do. fault. Somewhere, some way, shape or form. But I guess she does because that's the last we see of Joyce. Yeah. I guess she goes, at, which good on Joyce for. Yeah, for listening. Right. Because and I don't think it was until she said, you stay, you're going to get me killed. Right. Cause because she's going to worry about you and that's not a great point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sheila wasn't there either. They just don't care about her. <laughs> did Willow tell her mom or did, or did Sheila just wasn't coming? She wasn't, anyway? she wasn't in town anyway. <laughs> so then we go to Willow and Willow's panicking. She's, she's freaking out. Freaking the fuck out. She's afraid she's going to die. And yeah. there were some things she wanted to do before <laughs> she died <laughs> after high school and Oz is just being you know, ironic detachment guy, how, she says. How Oz does. Yeah. He's very 
calm, cool, yep. collected. And he's like, well, would it help if I panic? She's like, yes, yes, please. Please. I need some emotion right now. Just don't make me feel weird about this. And then he just does the thing. She's like, da 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 And he shuts her up by kissing her. He, like, grabs the back of her yes. neck. And it's a good kiss. It's very good. It's a good kiss. And she's, he's like, she's like, what are, what, what, what are you doing? Panicking. So this is the time when uh, they uh, do the nasty yeah. for the first time. Yep. Willow, Willow loses her virginity in this sea of confusion and and, it's <laughs> and <sweet>. uncertainty. <laughs> and they have they make sweet and tender love. Yes. <laughs> and then we have this weird drastic cut to Buffy has gone to the professor's house. And actually, the first time I saw it, I laughed so hard. It has to be an outtake they decided to just let every in. Every time. Why? Because <laughs> he turns and looks at the door, too, like the door did it. and runs into Like, why? Is this... And her comment, too. Stealthy. Right. So, I mean, it, it has to be an outtake it that they has just to be. all But it went was so with. funny. He was like, uh, 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 he did. He slipped on something and ran full on into Ooh. the door, and it's really funny. It's very awkward. So they, uh, Buffy is in old professor's place, and she's tooling around looking for things. And her and Angel are having a, oh, why are you here? And oh, I thought you might need some help. And they finally leave. She like packs up some shit from the professor, and he's like being all chivalrous and whatnot, and like carries the box for. Her. She's like, I don't need you to do that. Blah, blah. <laughs> it at her basically <laughs> it's like they both have like a fucking meltdown and temper tantrum he actually calls cry. her a brat he calls her a brat and mm-hmm. then she overreacts well it's nice to know what you think about yeah. me yeah well you are kind of being she's a still brat. raw <laughs> she's, you both... dump me a prom in a sewer <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky I don't kill you for real like <laughs> seriously um Angel probably should have stayed away he should have stayed away uh he, 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 she's She's a slayer. She doesn't really need you to. Yeah, you can't do this. You could. You, you could have gone. You keep playing these games. Mm-hmm. This back and forth. You're business. messing with her. Yeah, it's not cool. And he's like, you know, under the guise of I'm want to help and I I still care about you and your well being. I don't care. Apparently, you don't. You don't. Because this is really fucking with her mentally, mm-hmm. and she needs to be on point right now. Yeah, she needs to, you know, be able to concentrate on everything that's going on. And then he gets shot <laughs> right through the back. There's just so... How come everybody on the street, too, was just like, what's going on? He gets shot? He got shot. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. There was nobody they looked. paid its attention. So we see up at the top of the cinema that it was Faith. It was Faith. She shot him with an arrow. Right and through the heart. Like the a song vampire. by ABC. Mm-hmm. And a vampire, <laughs> she's hanging out with this weird vampire henchman that's up there with her. And he's all, miss the heart. She's like, meant to. Uh, look, you're like, why are you Ooh. here? <laughs> it's like, oh, you meant to. Oh. oh, so we go back to the library and I love that. She's like, they have that countdown where she's like, okay, on the count of three, I'm going to pull it out. And she's like, one, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> of course I was. That's what happens every time someone says they're going to count so, to three. Right. Come on now. Uh-oh. And so she, you know, bandages him up and they're like, this is fine. We, you know. He's All like, right. Oh, I heal quickly. It'll be cool. He goes to stand up and he's like, damn, mm-hmm. and topples over. And she's like, you have been real clumsy today. And he just drops. He's done. And we find out it's a poison arrow. Yep. And he's going to die. And it's serious. Yeah. Wesley offers to contact the council mm-hmm. because they have every known poison to man on file. Yep. But uh, their policy is not to help heal vampires. Mm-hmm. And there's some like awkward back and forth between Buffy and Wesley about, you know, I'm watching my lover die. Lover? Why? Phrasing? (laughs) Someone pointed out online, too, and it's probably the Buffy Wiki, because they have great stuff on there, that there's an interesting synergy with that, with her saying, spoiler alert! Huge, huge spoiler alert! Let me preface it before I go on. You know, with her saying, I'm watching my lover die. Mm. And he actually has to go through that later. And his lover dies in his arms. And then he, in turn... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, right? <laughs> dies in a facsimile of his lover's arms. Mm. It's like a weird... Yeah. Synergistic circle that happens. Yeah. There's a lot of weird... And that, I just wonder. <clears throat> there's a lot of things that are said done that seem like foreshadowing Mm -hmm. and I wonder how meticulous like how purposeful it is like did Joss put a specific line in there saying yep 
that shit's gonna happen later. Apparently, or you did have it all they planned just, out. Like, go back and was like, yeah, this will work. Yeah. It's weird. So we get a lovely afterglow moment with Oz <laughs> and Willow. And they can't even have that that moment. No, it, but it is cute though. She's like, everything's different. Oh no, wait, you did this. He's like, no, I get it. I get you, girl. I feel it. I got you. We're good. I got you. It's special still. It's still special, baby. And they, and not to be gross, but they're just both so wee people. They fit together so well. Like they're perfect. They're like little puzzle. They're like so they're sweet. meant to be together. They're so sweet. I'm sorry, Tara. I really am. Yeah, but... I mean, I really do enjoy Tara and Willow. Like that is a real love that. <sighs> I, I would pick Tara and Willow over fucking Kennedy. I hate oh, Kennedy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was not, that was nothing in no. comparison to what Tara and yeah. Willow shared. But was... I love Tara as Dawn's mom. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Buffy. You were never going to be that. No. You're not responsible no. enough to. Mm. There was definitely like a sweetness and a, a, ten, a, a, a very special, like, mother. She's more God. upset about her leaving, I think. Then Willow even is yeah. when they break up. She's she's pissed. Yeah. She was pissed. But I guess we'll get there. But I do just Oz and Willow. I love it. There was like so everything much. about their relationship I was in love with. Mm-hmm. And everything he said to her. Like, if I ever got a tattoo, I might get a tattoo of you've the sweetest smile I've ever seen. Like, oh my God. I love you. It just breaks every time. It's just like that that And it stopped her in her tracks too, like Right. Thank it's, you. It's like, like that was disarming as fuck. Yeah. Like, wow. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Because it was just so random and just mm-hmm. like he broke. Ugh. Or even in the beginning of season three when she's like, "You're supposed to stop me when I do that." I like it when you do that. He's perfect. He always said the right thing. To he season always four. said the right thing to her. Mm-hmm. Halloween. She's Joan of Arc. God. <laughs> Little tag says so <sad>, God. <laughs> And then he went and fucked it all up. So. That bitch. Okay. <laughs> we are back in the mayor's office and I have a huge problem with this scene. Is this where Faith rolls in or is he yeah. eating the, the He's eating spiders? the gross demon spiders. Mm. And he's, she says, or well, this is before he eats them, but he has the box on his desk. Mm. And he's like, I have to ingest these things. And she, ingest? You know what the fucking word ingest means. You are not that dumb. Right. No, don't, don't play. He it. even looked at her too like. <laughs> Eat. Put them like ingest. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you, you know better than that. So then he, you know, she tells him that little story because he calls her a little firecracker. And she reminisces. Like, My mom used to call me that. Apparently that took her to a dark place because she never really finished the story. Mm-mm. About jumping off the thing. No, the, about oh, like about when I, mom, I used yeah. to run around and it just kind of trails off. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the mayor takes an interest in her backstory. Mm-hmm. He stops what he's doing. Right. And he listens to her. He's got dark rituals to attend to. Right. But he has time to listen to Faith's story mm-hmm. about her life before she was a slayer, when she was a kid. And, you know, about her being so uh, brave to, like, jump off the quarry back in Boston with the kids and nobody else they wouldn't just, do it. No, they were Z- too scared. Xander was interested in hearing about her stories. Stories about her r- naked wrestling an alligator. Mm-hmm. That was it. Yeah, to get his jollies off because she yep. was a prop in his fantasy. But he listens to her. <sighs> Why couldn't he use his powers for good? I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's all coming to a head, and this is all happening, and it's all coming together. And so Xander's helping Giles at the library. And Anya comes back <laughs> and she's like, let's go. Let's just get out of here. I'm scared. My mm. car is outside. This is. Where'd you get car? When did you learn to drive? Because in season five. Yeah, she didn't know how or to drive. Or season six, she didn't know how to drive. No, she didn't. No. Even in the uh, the season four Restless one, she's driving with gestures. In the <laughs> dream. Right. And that's just Xander's <laughs> dream of her. Right. But the, and the in triangle, she right. does not know how to drive. No, she for real doesn't. Yeah. She, doesn't makes a statement of yeah. that she does not know how to drive. And she's just like, let's see what happens. So why does she have a car? You didn't plan that one out. <laughs> but I do like her rationale where she's like, just leave with me. She was like, I don't know why, but every time I think something bad's going to happen to you, I feel bad inside. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Yes. And I, aw. Oh, Anya, that's love, sweetie. No. Mm-hmm. Poopers. <laughs> but Xander's just like, 
There's I, life and death shit happening. Like I they, got things to do. And it's like, um, I gotta be with my friends. Just like, you're just gonna get in the way. And it's a truthful statement. True statement. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. <laughs> You are just going to get in the way. (laughs) She's just like, go ahead and die. I don't care. And he's like, all right, deuces. Call me. (laughs) Are we going to (laughs) kiss? And this behavior does not stop from her. It happens again in season four when she just shows up out of the blue. (laughs) Um, Okay. But that's why we love Anya. Yeah. Anya's good. Anya's good for business. She is. She's good for business. So uh, after all of the um, research and whatnot, they find out what the cure is. Turns out it's the blood of a slayer. Yeah. And they found this out. Drain. Not from the council because the council refused to help. Right. No. So Buffy quit. Yeah, that's right. She full on was like, I'm done. Yeah. You go ahead and you go tell your council. Which I'm surprised it took her this long, really. Mm -hmm. And I love that Giles is just like. Uh, Wesley's like, hey, talk to her. He's like, I ain't gonna, I don't work for you. Yeah, I ain't nothing to say. I, right am, I am an unemployed fucking watcher. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't want you to, I don't, I don't, I don't, say, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't matter. I don't mean none. So I think it's Oz that actually finds it in a book in the library. All right. And they, yep, the blood of a the slayer. The blood of a slayer. I have to drain, mm-hmm. the, drain blood the blood of a slayer. Of a slayer. And uh, Buffy is suddenly okay with it. She's like, all right. Yeah, they're all like, well, what are we going to do? This sucks. And she's like, nope, this nope. is great. Nope. I know exactly just- what to do. And they're like, are you sure? I got this. I know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, she goes to Faith's house, mm-hmm. apartment, whatevs. And Faith's just... <laughs> The way Faith eating licorice, she got reading comics and... Uh... The way Faith greets her is just like, oh, you know, that really is like, hey, is he dead yet? like no turns no. out uh, she's like there's a cure she's like ah that sucks what is it blood of a slayer hmm. come to important. get me yeah it's like what are you gonna do feed me to your yeah. lover <laughs> and I love she look at you all dressed up in big sisters clothes which she is she's it's like she, she really is she took some time to go home and change uh-huh. and, pull and put out. on some leather pants yep she dressed for the occasion. I I, I kind of respect it. <laughs> it's like I, yeah. I, I I need to put on the full armor, apparently. Mm-hmm. So they fight. Good fight. It's a good fight. And Until I noticed something. What'd you notice? Oh. I'm a I'm a huge continuity person. Like why don't you take pictures of the set while you're taking <laughs> Right. That, right? That does bug me. So there's a scene. Where Faith throws Buffy into that giant TV she has that's uh-huh. built into the wall. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens. She bounces off of it. Mm-hmm. Next shot, there's all kinds of broken screen on the floor. Right? <laughs> Next shot, gone. <laughs> Next shot, debris on, debris on the floor again. Wow. Yeah, it's real bad. But it's nothing compared to the full-on crew that we get outside when they're fighting outside. The Netflix versions, which we can't right. see anymore. Yeah. Full-on crew filming from another angle. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's why you don't go back and re... It was meant to be shot in four... That's four. fucked up. Yeah. That's really messed up. Full on crew. Cameras, grips, everyone. That's funny, because I saw that in, like, season one of Angel. There's a, an episode... There's a scene in one of the episodes where it's full crew. Mm-hmm. Right there in the living room somewhere. It happens again in Buffy <laughs> later on in, like, in season four when they're out looking for that demon that killed the boy. And there's like a grip with the mic and he quickly backs up. (laughs) But yeah, this one was full on crew. Wow. So they fight and it's a good fight. It's really good. They are even like, they're pretty evenly matched too. Yeah. They dig in each other's asses quite a bit. Right. They get a good, you know, Buffy gets a good shot in. Faith gets that nice back kick that she has. She's good at that. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. And she's got a pretty fierce pimp punch too. She does a cause, backhand because I love it because like every time Buff like there's a moment like a break mm-hmm. and Buffy will say something smart and Buffy and Faith will just punch the shit yep. out of her. her yeah, <laughs> and I love it. I absolutely love it. So they like two caged animals. They can't fight in this apartment, right? So Buffy, it, you know, it the mayor thinks later on that it was Faith that wanted to take the fight outside. Uh-huh. No. Buffy grabbed Faith and pulled her through that window. Okay, she took sure, the fight I outside. I was watching that and I was mm-hmm. like, who pulled Yeah, over? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know Faith got over there first. Mm-hmm. But 
All and right. that Buffy does that. She tackles people. Right. I don't know. She just does that. <laughs> and so they it spills out onto the roof. And then she then Buffy uh, snaps some handcuffs on her. Where'd she get those? Wow. Okay. That was you and Angel are loo- like. What the fuck are you guys do? All right. Sure. You, whatever. Where did you get that? <gasps> I know where she got them. <laughs> Joyce she, still how had them. Did she ever look at them again the same way? Joyce still had them. So they fight some more yeah. while they're handcuffed. Now it becomes like beat it, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson video. They're just like rolling around. And <laughs> Faith eventually manages to pull the handcuffs apart. Which I'm surprised that she didn't take Buffy's arm I off. I know. She should have. Ow, ow, seriously. Right. Okay, he'll say stop. But the link breaks, uh. and that's when Buffy pulls out Faith's knife. And I'm a little shocked that this, like, I don't know if Faith has been thinking about this knife for all this time or whatnot, but I just feel like she should have been wanting it back a little bit sooner. Yeah. Because I'd have gone looking for my knife. Yeah. Because, like, Buffy pulls it out. She's like, hey, it's mine. Mm -hmm. And she's (laughs) like, you're about to get it back. The way that that nasally. That (laughs) nasally. Every time it's like, um, we couldn't have done a second take. <laughs> Could have cleared your nasal passages. You're yeah, about to get it back. It's so terrible. <laughs> Am I? There was. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. It doesn't sound very forceful. No. I mean, does it, did you want to try it again with a little more authority? Yeah. Like maybe a little more, just like aggression, yeah. just a little and bit deeper. Where did you have it? Because you've been rolling around and kicking. Was it poking you? I should have sliced. She should have like scars mm-hmm. and slices on her back or wherever the fuck it was. Because yeah. I don't think she had a sheath no. for it. She said stuffed in her pants. Stuffed in her fucking pants. Mm-hmm. So they and, uh, yeah. And um, Buffy plunges the knife in her gut. In her gut. Now, I really wish Buffy had come to terms with all of this before. I mean, just in theory, not because. You know, because I, I like Eliza Dushku and I like Faith. But in theory, Buffy should have come to terms with everything that was going to have to happen mm-hmm. before this moment. Because when she plunges that knife into her, she's so shocked. She's shocked. 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 So shocked. She's like in a state of fucking like she's like in a fugue state. Like she's going to throw up or something. Right. Like she's, and <gasps> she's just paralyzed mm-hmm. and lets Faith take the like she takes the knife out let's faith talk about it some more let's faith formulate, bitch slap her formulate a plan mm-hmm. of escape <laughs> like she bitch slaps her across the balcony mm-hmm. and buffy's like on the ground and still watching and listening and in shock like <laughs> <laughs> and you know at this point like and faith waits and sees that there's a truck a coming baller <sighs> so baller <sighs> Like, still not going to help your like, boy, though. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I was like, oh, yep. you may have had the balls to do this. But mm-hmm. ah, it's a moot point. Sorry. <laughs> Perfect landing. Deuces. Yep. And she jumps off the balcony onto a moving truck. And Which. It's out. It's out. Um, I get freaked out when like a rock hits my car. Nobody heard that. Right. They didn't even <laughs> stop. Just kept going. Kept going. Nobody heard a thump nope. in the back. No. Quite a big thump too. Like, yeah, yeah. Like at, at least what like point what? Did you realize? You could, right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's part one. Part one. So what are we gonna do? What do we get? We don't know what's gonna happen. Dun dun dun. And in real life, we did not know what was going to happen. No. People because people sitting like, oh my god, next week I can't. What is, Wait, it's not going to be on next week? What do you mean it's not going to be What the fuck do you mean it's not going to be on next week? I'm sorry? When is it going to be on? Wait, when? <laughs> Wait, okay. Seriously? Like, you're, you're fucking with me, right? <laughs> Middle of the summer, I believe. A little bit. July, I think it was. It was, uh, yeah, something. Like- A little random, too. Like, uh, okay. And I, I get what they were doing. It was violence it was in a July. school. It was July. July, full on 13th. Rude. That's, um, yeah, that's. that's but I get it. I get what was going I on politically it. in the world and whatnot. But you guys would have been better off just like leaving both of them, like part one and part two until July. <laughs> so apparently like Canada got to watch it anyway oh really yeah because you know it aired canada doesn't have right going on like that so apparently there were digital downloads ah. back then you know somebody probably got rick Astley for sure 
You know how you would download something and all of a sudden, like, you're like, yes, that's my jet. Ja- Wait, why is Rick Astley playing? Or you'd get a Clinton impersonator. Ah, that was the worst. <laughs> you're like, yes, my song, my song. Right. And then that pop would happen. Bill Clinton. What? Why? After you. And back in our day, kids, it wasn't as, like, downloads were not instant fucking tedious. Right. Sometimes that shit took eight hours. Or longer. Yeah, overnight. You're to where you're like, like, I'm just going to leave this and come back right. to Rick Astley. I've been Astley'd. I don't like it. <laughs> so, okay, fine. Whatever. Uh, yes. So. No right. song. No song. Mm-mm. Just, uh, yeah. Just a lot of Christoph Beck. Mm-hmm. Morty's burn. <laughs> Very beginning of the episode. She tells Xander, dignity, you, in relation to clothes, I'm washed in a sea of confusion. But uh, Cordy never ceases to uh, surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> with a lot with her vocabulary. Bodies drop. Just old Lester, so the professor. Lester. Lester the molester professor. Faith didn't die, so she doesn't count. Nope. Moral of the story: Sometimes you have to save the one you love. Wait. Sometimes to save the one you love, you will do the unthinkable. You really will, because uh, Buffy's she's game for murder. She was like, yeah, it really didn't take much convincing either. And honestly, what was your plan? So you were going to stab her in the gut. That's what I was thinking about, too. And I'm, and I'm imagining that she's like, she throws her over her shoulder yeah. and carries her back to the mansion. Nobody's going to see you dragging this bleeding girl. And then you're just going to, what, flop her in front of Angel? Not even a duffel bag? Right. You want to bring nothing? Didn't. So the handcuffs didn't work out. I think you were thinking you would subdue her and drag her. I you guess. were just going to feed him to. So she did, couldn't even. Yeah. Like. Maybe a sedative. Right? Maybe you should have brought one of those with you. Dart gun. I know you have one. Yes. I know you have one. So, Buffy, you didn't think this fully through. Mm-mm. She's got that huge window in her apartment. You probably could have sniper dart gun. Oh, her, yeah, absolutely. And then just gone and picked up her her yeah. unconscious body. You uh, did much more than you should have. Mm-hmm. You had to. You just wanted to beat her ass. Work harder, not smarter. Yeah. Yep. Or work smarter, not, not harder. harder. Yeah. <laughs> We did have noteworthy scenes. There were quite a few this time. Um, particularly, we've got uh, when the mayor interrupts the Scoobies in the library. Yeah, that was a, it. When is a good like one. it's Ooh. so fucking good. He just oozes evil. Oh just my god, he oozes. rolls like and the way that he goes from sing song, he's like, oh, this is the inner sanctum. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. To like races commingling together, living, and he's like, ah, that's a spunky little girl you've mm-hmm. got. I'm going to eat her. Ew. But as we'll find out next week or next episode, you didn't think your plan through very well either. No, nah, not so much. Also, um, you know, when Buffy quits the council. Mm-hmm. That that's was, an important that moment. That's a big, that's a graduation. That, yeah. That's what she really, she graduated from the council. Yeah, that was huge because, mm-hmm. yeah, um, we don't have much history ourselves on what the previous slayers or what their relationships were like with the watchers council but it's just a um, it's an example of how the world kind of outgrows certain systematic units Mm -hmm. that are in place like the council like they've we've always done it this way yeah and it just got to the point where your slayer that you have now and then the world that you're in now has like has gone past what it is you know as normal and yep. what you are willing to do. And so Buffy finally calls bullshit. Yep. She's, she's done. Like I'm out. I'm done. Cause like, it's been a long time of coming really. Cause she hasn't really played by their rules for no. quite some time or wanted to play by their rules, especially no. once they fired Giles. She just never, she never read her Slayer handbook. She's no. never followed the rules. And I'm sure that guy, Quinton. Yes. I'm sure when Wesley called him, he was like, this bitch. I swear to God, <laughs> why? <laughs> Why do we put up with her shit? Seriously. Like, why? Why? Be- because she's the chosen one mm-hmm. and you've got a sociopath. Right. As the other slayer. Those are your options. You have not <laughs> either put up with Buffy or deal with Faith. So I've always wondered, why didn't they just kill Faith or kill know. Buffy? I don't know. So Faith, we I, I'm pretty sure... If you kill Buffy, it's not like another one's going to be activated. Right. Because Faith is still Faith. alive. You would have to kill them both. Right. Why not clear the decks? Yeah, start over, start fresh. I know you try that eventually on Angel, and it doesn't go well. With? With Faith. Faith, You send your murder squad after Faith, and it doesn't go well. You're really bad at this. They suck. They suck. They... Again, dart guns. Long distance. Fucking worst. I just don't get it. 
There's seriously, like, I haven't seen anything useful of the council Mm -mm. ever. No, never. Um, And then, of course, the Buffy and Faith fight. Which is one of my favorite fights. That shit was precise. Mm. I love the give us a kiss. Yes. (laughs) She's opening herself up. She's, go ahead, give me the, go ahead, I will give you, right here. Like, Do it. Like Breakfast Club. Right. Mm-hmm. Right here, just one shot, that's all I'm asking <laughs> one for. One shot. Mm-hmm. She's, come on, Do I'll it. give it to you. Yeah, let's get this done. And she and me, I love how, you know, Buffy punches her in the face, and Faith doesn't just punch back, she backhands her, full-on spin backhands her. And it's great. I know she's crazy, but Faith is my favorite. I love it. <laughs> she fights like an animal. She does. It's like a cage. Like mm-hmm. it's just an attack mode mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. And yeah, the, their fight styles are so very different, and, that and I, I that, enjoy that. That back kick is my favorite. Yeah, that shit is fucking. I bad. hope one day I'll be limber enough to just attempt it in my own house. Yeah, I'll never try. I'll probably kick myself in the face somehow, but. <laughs> I'm not going to try that. Mm -mm. Not going to be the one. Okay, so before we get into graduation day part two, now is our special talk with um, uh, Nancy Nancy Holder. We uh, talk a lot about um, her coolest job ever, basically. She does have the coolest job ever. The only other cool job is she mentions at some point that there's a Buffy fact checker. How do I get that job? Right? I want to be the Buffy fact checker. Seriously. I'm sure I could do that. Fuck yeah. Like, that's amazing. So she like, she, you know, we just talk about um, the Buffy books that she has authored as well as a couple of others. And she's got Wonder Woman novel coming out in the novelization of Wonder Woman in June, as well as the new Buffy uh, Demon Encyclopedia that's out in September. So, um, yeah, let's get into that. We'll just uh, let's talk to Nancy. Scene one, Apple, take one. Okay, Scoobies, we are here with author extraordinaire, one Miss Nancy Holder. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. Hi, how are you, Scooby people? <laughs> we are very happy and pleased to uh, have you on the podcast today. Thank you. I just have a couple of questions for you about uh, your, all of your, um, well, not all of your works, <laughs> because <they're> your <laughs> biography is quite, is, is quite hefty. <laughs> You've been a very busy lady. I have. I have. So, uh, first of all, well, let's find out how's your day going so far? It's pretty early where you are still. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What time is it, actually? It's oh, well, it's 11 here. Um, it's great. I've uh, gotten up. I went to the farmer's market to see the goat parade, which, unfortunately, I was late and I missed the goat parade. But oh. I saw two baby goats. And I saw a goat with somebody carrying the goat's tutu around. So oh. I, I saw the after party of the goat parade. And uh, it was really cute. So maybe next year I'll make it to the go parade. <laughs> and um, any morning I get to talk to Buffy is a good morning. Or talk about Buffy is a good morning. So um, um, this day is going great. Excellent. Awesome. So, uh, all right, let's dig in here. Marcella has some questions. Yes. So, Okie dokie. Let's start with, can you just tell us a little bit about what inspired you to start writing Buffy stories? Was it a love of the show? How did that all come about for you? Well, a very, uh, very great question. Uh, through the years, people have forgotten to ask me that one. Um, <laughs> what had happened was I had written some romance novels and I had written horror. And I was a pro, I was, had a mutual friend who's a writer and he said, um, somebody is going to be bidding on the rights for a TV show that's not on the air yet, but it's going to be on, I think it was a Mondays at first. It's been so long now. Anyway, as soon as he said all the things he said, I knew what it was. I knew it was Buffy. It wasn't on the air yet. And I was just crazed. I was so excited. I knew the editor who was bidding on the rights. And I thought, oh, this is going to be so cool. Well, she emailed me and she said, I did not get the rights to the show. And so I I can't offer you a contract to write me Buffy books. I found out who did get the rights. And together with my co-author, Chris Golden, I had just had a baby and that very day my babysitter quit. And I thought, oh, I can't, I can't move forward. But I talked to Chris and he goes, let's, I said, would you like to work with me? And he said, yes. So we went together and we approached Lisa Clancy, who was the editor at Simon & Schuster, who did win the rights. And um, we had three and a half weeks to write the first novel. The book, the show had not come on the air yet. And um, we got scripts. Uh, FedEx to us from the company. And so we read the first six or seven scripts and we created our own little dictionary 
we called it Slayer Speak, and it was oh, wow. it was the the way they talked, of course, and we concentrated on any script that Joss wrote. We we sp- paid special attention. We wrote thirteen um, in the interim. We had written thirteen um, ideas for Lisa to pick from. She picked one and said, "You have three and a half weeks," mm. and we did it. We absolutely did it. And then after that, I kept getting more Buffy work. I'm still working on Buffy. Wow. Um, and so the show had not come on yet, but I I just sensed it was going to be awesome. And the night it came on, um, we watched the broadcast. And at that time, well, still, Chris lives in Boston and or that area. I live on the West Coast. So he could see it first. <laughs> so he started calling me at the at the breaks. I knew it was the commercial breaks. And I go, la, 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 and hang up on him. <laughs> and so <laughs> I didn't want to know anything. And when I watched it, I, you know, I watched the broadcast along with everybody else. I had read the scripts, but I had not seen any of the episodes before it was broadcast that night. And I just broke down in tears because I thought, this is so cool. And I'm writing a book for this show. And I just couldn't believe it. I was, I was over the moon. I can't even tell you how happy I was. I thought, this is my show. I get this show. That so is, I was thrilled. That is such an amazing story, how that came Thank about. You. you were yeah. already you. writing the stories before the rest of us even knew yeah. what was going on. Yep. Yep. <laughs> were- um, there's a really amazing store in Los Angeles called Dark Delicacies. It's in Burbank. And um, they have everything horror, that, from books to candelabras to complete sets of dishes and they had a used soundtrack from the Buffy movie and I was in that store while I was waiting to find out if we got the gig and I bought the soundtrack to the Buffy movie because it's all there was there was no Buffy stuff out yet and um, I just listened to it constantly for good luck <laughs> no. <laughs> make it so make it happen for me soundtrack too i really i'm a huge fan of that soundtrack actually. <laughs> yeah, i know it's really good and if you go back and watch the movie it's not the buffy we know right you no know, it's not our buffy but it was a good movie yes, you it's know? Like I, precursor though it's like the, right well it's like the star wars movies you've got your you know you've got your <laughs> original trilogy and you've got the new you know the stuff we love same with Buffy. There you go. <laughs> and we got Jar Jar. Yes, <laughs> yes. And that's, there's Pike. There's. <laughs> and you have such a wonderful grasp on the way that Joss wrote those characters. After the show came out, how did your Slayer Speak dictionary evolve once you saw the actors' portrayals of the characters that you were now well, writing? As you probably know, it's kind of, well, it's kind of, here's an aside story. Um, there is a wonderful group of academics who study the works of Joss Whedon, and it started out just Buffy, of course, and they meet every, I think, every two years now. Um, they're the Whedon Studies Association. I'm a member. And um, one of their um, alum, you know, one of their learned professors wrote an entire um, linguistic book about Slayer Speak or Buffy Talk or however you want to say it. And so he said, I was in the audience when he was presenting his paper on it, and um, he said, would you say that the first, in the first season, it was a lot more valley speak than the last, the, the other seasons? And my reply was, whatever. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, if you look at the first season, if you watch it through again, if you watch the, especially the first few episodes, they are way heavy on the lingo. It's like, you know, pause, neg, negly. And they kind of gave that up after a while. It wasn't quite so, so dense. Yeah. And um, the, the only time, only time that I went er was when there's a line where somebody says, I think it's in um, I Robot You Jane and I think, and Willow says something like, I was online. And Buffy says, what were you waiting for? And that's not a California. We don't wait online. We wait in line. Right. And I thought, okay, they broke the fourth wall to get a joke. No, <laughs> <that's wrong. laughs> so, so yeah. So over time, our dictionary, there were actually published, not, you know, published homes and people were doing their own Buffy dictionaries and, you know, on and on through the years. And every once in a while, Chris and I, or Chris or I, or another writer would add something to the, to the sort of the group canon. Mm-hmm. And um, we'd use that. And also, of course, there was the, the bronze. 
And um, a lot of people in the bronze would say things like, for example, the reason we have a Polgara demon is there was um, a fan in in the bronze whose last name was Polgara. And I think it was David Fury who um, took her last name and made a demon out of her. So, yes. yeah, Buffy was one of the very first shows that had, like, social media interactions and um Buffy came on just as sort of like the average person had access to the internet. And so it fed back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, you know, like I was just, just by chance, I was um, reading the biography of Jeff Pruitt, who was one of the stunt coordinators for many years. And his, his wife, Sophia Crawford was Buffy's stunt double for the first few seasons. And um, he he a couple times put Easter eggs like on a whiteboard or something, and they would tell the people in the chat room, look at this episode at this time, and you'll see a note to you guys on the chalkboard or the whiteboard in the in the classroom in this episode. Wow. So in that way, I just kind of tried to keep track, and I'd go in the chat room and I'd listen to how people were talking, and um, you know when we would write Lisa, our editor, or anybody on the show we would make fun of not make fun, but talk in that way. Like, uh, I'm working hard. I'm a, I'm a thing of working. There's working, you know, the working is happening here and that's not a good example, but you know, uh, like I'm laughing because my, my Italian teacher who's, who I have class with, um, his name is Owen. (laughs) Every time he's going to, we're going to go, I think I go, isn't that so? (laughs) So, I mean, if you if you try to explain to somebody in Italian, what is isn't that so? What does that mean? You can't really explain it. You just have to go with it. You know, did you ever get a chance to go on set while filming? Oh, yes. Um, I would say on Buffy through the years, if you added up all the days that I was there, I was probably there for a month. Um, The first the first watcher's guide, we were up there for two weeks. Uh, or I was, I was up there longer and I stayed in the hotel. And the amazing thing about TV production is the average day, their work day. Like if you have a, a, wor- a job, your work day is considered eight hours. You have an eight hour day in TV. It's 12. Yeah. And so I would go there as soon as I was hoping somebody would be able to let me in. And then I would stay till midnight because I only had a certain number of days and I had to interview all these people and get information. And the weird thing was somebody was always there. It was just like Disneyland. I could walk in at 11 at night and the store was open. You know, somebody was there working hard. And um, I would just say, may I speak to so-and-so about this? May I speak to so-and-so about this? I need to look at that. And they go, sure. And I'd get in these little rooms and I'd like look through all the, um, the casting sheets and the information for the day, like they would say, um, please be careful. There's going to be a live animal on set today. Or my favorite note was um, we're going to shoot in our artificial graveyard and there are going to be pieces of turf over open pits. So don't walk across the graveyard. You'll fall in. (laughs) That was so cool. (laughs) But yes, I got to go. And in fact, one of the first things we did, when we got up there was we walked the high school set and we just spoke into a tape recorder and said everything as we walked. This is what I see. This is what I see. This is what I see. And then while we were doing it, Joss walked up and said, how's it going? Hi, you guys. La la. And uh, I said, I'm getting a little depressed. And he laughed. He goes, yeah, I know. High school was so depressing. <laughs> and he goes, he said, I'm doing my job. I'm just getting depressed. I said, yeah. <laughs> so we checked, the, we checked the snack machine. It did not work. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. And then, like, if you remember where Miss Callender's running down the hall and she's trying to get out, um, right back there, there's nothing. I mean, they just put a backdrop to make it look like there's something outside there at school. But it's just a, it's just a blank. It's nothing past that. So it was stuff like that that was so cool and so interesting. You know, like you'd start to go upstairs, there's nothing past there. And, you know, they used that little hallway for the first two or three seasons over and over and over and over. They'd just redress it. They'd have walked down the, the hall of school. They'd change all the things to look different and walk back the other way. And it was the same hall. And uh, they did that just saving money as they could because at first, you know, they didn't have a big budget. Well, they never really had a very big budget, but, you know, it was a, just a 13 episode show and then they picked it up. But they didn't know. I mean, they were in these reconverted 
um, warehouses that the Buffy people actually cleaned and made ready to shoot in themselves. It was not a sound studio like Paramount. It was a, it's still there, but the, the offices are gone and the sound stages are gone, but it's called Bergamo Station, B-E-R-G-A-M-O-T Station um, in Santa Monica. And it's off Cloverfield, which is why I think why they called it Cloverfield for the movies. <laughs> and um, the Flap Happy Hat factory is near there and it's for little kids this certain kind of hat for little kids and it was there was an art gallery and a food place and a mutant enemy and you could walk in and you would see the production offices for Buffy and the shooting and the sound stages for Buffy you would see the alley that they'd always shoot the bronze out there their parking lot would become the cemetery Hmm. And um, the the writers and post production for Angel were also there. The rest of Angel was at Paramount Studios. Huh. So going to Angel was more like a Hollywoody thing, you know, like with the people with the tours on the carts, and you walk into these huge, famous sound stages, and there was all the Angel stuff, and then uh, the producers and things were in these bungalows, like those '30s style Hollywood bungalows. But wow. Angel, I mean, Buffy had their own gig, their own thing, and and they made it from scratch. They did everything on their by them, not by themselves, but they yeah. did it. And so when it was done, that it was gone. <laughs> so it's very sad. But uh, but yeah, I went up there a lot, and um, it just got to the point where I would go up, and I knew the the we had a liaison at that time, Caroline Callis, and um, if Caroline wasn't there, I would just find the because I, I would have to talk to the security guard and I would say, would you please contact the production coordinator? And I'd been up enough times where people knew they, I would look familiar and they go, Oh, it's okay. Let her in. And so um, after a while, people couldn't quite remember why I was there. <laughs> so, why are you here? And, like, and, and they, they thought I was like from national inquirer or something yeah. at first. They were very nervous about, is it okay to talk to you? And they would explain um, she's writing an episode guide book for the show because that's why we went on set. Um, we didn't go on set for the novels. It was just an extra. It was extra cool, but we didn't. We probably wouldn't have gone on just for novels. Um, and so because I did the episode guide books with Jeff uh, Marriott, Mary Elizabeth Hart, and Chris Golden, and Keith Candido helped us um, because I was getting specific production information and interviewing the actors and all the staff, then I went on set. And so that was really cool. So I watched a lot of things and I interviewed Joss a number of times and um, it was just really great. Yeah. I went up there a lot and um, I went to their Christmas party oh. uh, one year They had lobster and steak. <laughs> it was awesome. So Were you ever able to get in an episode, sneak your way into an episode? No, you know, I never really asked. It's kind of funny. Um, in L.A., you, people, you kind of want to be cool. And so <laughs> asking, like, can I have your autograph or can I be in the, in the episode is a little too fanish at the time. You, you kind of have to act like, yeah, I, I'm cool. And so I didn't ask. I think if I'd asked, they'd probably, I don't know if they would have, but I think they would have considered it and taken it, you know, well, could we have these guys in an episode? Part of the issue with TV is they're moving so incredibly fast. They have to do so much so fast. And Buffy, um, Buffy was always like a mini movie. Then they would have eight days to begin preparing it and eight days to shoot it, 16 days. And they would, you know, yeah. And (laughs) so they didn't have time to go, wait, wait, Right. She wants to be in it. It's okay. If she, you know, it was like boom, 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 boom all the time. Yeah. So, um, this is just yeah. me walking in the background. Hey, it's fine. Just I'm plot just me down in the bronze. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. <laughs> oh, you were shooting? I didn't even know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, with, this, with the Buffy Slays 20, there's so much new material coming out and new merchandise. Mm-hmm. And I know you have a new encyclopedia coming out soon. Or that is true. Not yet. not yet, right? It's coming out soon. Yeah, June. Yeah. Uh, no, wait, not June. Wait, let me think. I'm not sure what it's yeah. October. It's coming out in October. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Actually, I'll look it up on Amazon while we're talking. Um, 
Can you tell uh, us about how that came about and what we can look forward to? I'm excited. Oh, to- my goodness. I, it's, it's amazing. Um, we just got a note from the fact checker. There's an actual fact checker. And um, it says, like, I, you know, this is so thorough. I can't believe it or something like that. Um, so, actually, I'm a little distracted. Let me see. I'm trying to figure out. I should have known this when it's coming out. <laughs> The reason I'm a little, there it is, September 26th. Okay. I'm a little bit um, fuzzy because I also novelized the Wonder Woman movie and it's coming out in June and I get them mixed oh, up. That's, that's... Yeah, but thank you. Um, so what it covers is it covers the seven seasons of Buffy, the TV show seasons, and then the ongoing seasons in the comic books, but it doesn't cover season 11 and it doesn't cover the new high school years uh, series because at one point, at some point, we just had to stop. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know, <laughs> so it doesn't cover that, but it covers all of the comic book stuff. Um, it covers the Spike, the series. It covers Willow Wonderland. Um, it covers Faith and Angel comics. And then it covers the Angel TV show episodes. And so, um, you know, I <laughs> I was a comic book person and I had read most of the comics but I hadn't kept good track. So when it came time to do the encyclopedia, I had a lot of surprises. Um, for example, Ethan Rain and Dracula are um, recurring in the comics. And I'd think, okay, here's my, here's my, um, my entry for Dracula. La, la. Oh, he's in, oh, he's in this comic. Oh, so there was a lot of backtracking and, um, and going a little crazy um, the comics are collected in different ways, depending on if you get a library volume, which is hardback, or if you get the paperback graphic novel collections. And so um, it got really complicated to figure out what was what volume was this in. So I repurchased all the volumes so they would so I'd have continuity without continually going through on the internet trying to figure out what volume is this specific story in so when you get the encyclopedia it lists all how to figure out if this is an episode or comic what comic series it is so it's amazing um it was a lot of work i thought i'd be like what i'll just you know but i know buffy but it was because it would say like buffy moved to sunnydale um thinking she was finished with the slaying game and then we would cite that BTVS, uh, welcome to the Hellmouth. Um, she met Riley, la la la, and we'd cite the episode. Um, we didn't want to get too crazy with it because then it would be a too long and it would get a little ponderous, even for the biggest Buffy freak. But <laughs> it's got tons of pictures and a lot of really good comic book art. I don't know how how that worked, how they got permission for all the comic book art, but there's a ton of it. It looks really sharp. It's really pretty. And one of the things I really loved is they tried to pick out fan favorites for extra big entries. Um, And in some cases, I would say maybe not always the standard core four and everything. They would pick something a little different. I think, oh, that's great. That guy got a, you know, a bigger entry. So I think it gives something fresh to people who might own other Buffy stuff. And, um, you know, I was the kind of person, like, if it there was the, a book I loved and had a different cover, I'd buy it because it had a different cover. <laughs> but, just... but, you know, this, this <laughs> has material that Buffy folks would enjoy even if for example they had the watcher's guides or the angel case book angel case file even if they have other non-fiction material and it is told in world it is told as if this is of course it is true for example anybody who's still alive we just say currently yeah. uh, the magic council is meeting at the blah 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 and um giles is blah 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 and so we just speak of things as if it's an ongoing real thing. It's not, um, it's not breaking the fourth wall. It's in the show. We call it in world. So you've got like the coolest job ever. Yeah. <laughs> it is, I have to say, I just sit here. I listen to my Christoph Beck soundtrack for like 20, 12 hours a day. I just hit replay or make my computer replay it. And um, I just sit here laughing. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. It's 20 years. And I'm still working on Buffy, so it's cool. 
So with your novelization of Wonder Woman, does that mean they let you see the movie first? I did see Wonder Woman, and I have to tell you, oh. I have to tell you, you are gonna I, if if you like Buffy, you are gonna like Wonder Woman. If you okay. love Buffy, you're gonna love. Oh, you're gonna love it. I couldn't believe it. Um, I saw it with three Warner Brothers people. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, three Warner brother, other Warner's brother people. One. Two of them were women. So they were viewing this at Warner Brothers was one guy and three women. All three of the women, including me, started crying. Oh. It was just so good. It was so good. And it was just so like, so woman, yay. And, uh, you know, if, if guys are listening, there's plenty of guy, guyness, you know, it's it very guy friendly. But uh, Wonder Woman, she's just so amazing and athletic. And, you know, she's she's another Buffy. She really is. So. I can see why I got the job. I can see why people thought of me and um and it's just it's a wonderful movie and when I thought it wasn't finished, so I would see where they'd have like half of a special effect finished or you could see the pads for the stunt people. So it was really really interesting. Um so I can't say I've seen the absolute finished product and since the screening they did edits so they emailed me or called me. We had a conference call. And they said, okay, this is what's in, this is what's out right now. And the same thing happened to me. I novelized the all-woman Ghostbusters, and the same thing happened where um, Ivan Reitman's assistant called me and said, okay, this is a list of the scenes now. Yeah. And so it's kind of like a runaway train in that way. Yeah. But it was amazing. It was, oh, it was such a good movie. Such a good movie. So, so I well, know. I'm stoked. I have for you is I hear that you're also a Doctor Who fan. I am. So I, I, a two-part question, and it's who should be the doctor? Uh, do you think okay. it's time for there to be a lady doctor for the next yes. Doctor, a woman? Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I am totally on board with it being a, a woman. I would love it, it if they had a woman. Um, my favorite doctor is Christopher Eccleston. I know he's not, you know, he's not David Tennant for some people, but he's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> so um christopher eccleston and who would i want to have be doctor who i'm not sure um but i have to say i'm i'm and i i don't know how to say this in a nice way um i'm watching a show helen Mirren was in in the 90s a british show called prime suspect and she's awesome she's yeah. so awesome and so um you know it, what why not that's what i say why the heck not but um but she would be yeah, a she would great be doctor. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. there's a lot of buzz around Tilda Swinton, and yeah, well, I mean, she's yeah. Tilda Swinton. She, Which pretty know. much, I watch Tilda or Helen do any right. about anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think either one of those would be perfect. And I also would love Bina Arooch. Our, you know, I would love um, uh, Giles' girlfriend, Olivia. I think that'd be awesome. So. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. So good good idea. call. Yeah. yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you. Show, but that's who I pick. Yes, I like it. So just like one more rando question. Do you ever appear at any Comic Cons or conventions or anything for signings? Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny because of late, I haven't been as active as I usually am. Um, I usually go to Comic Con and I'm usually at WonderCon. WonderCon is in um, Anaheim, I think, in Hammer LA this weekend. And I'm out there. And I'm feeling really bizarre. Like, what the heck? I'm not at WonderCon. <laughs> so, um, but I usually go to Comic Con every year. Um, there, let's see, what else do I have? I've been, I've just been to a, a ton of stuff, and um, it's just kind of ironic that this is the year of Buffy, and I'm not doing as much stuff as I usually do. I just have, honestly, just so much work. And right. the Buffy Encyclopedia had to come first. You know, right. it had to be do you have time to do this or do you have time to work on Buffy? And it was like, well, okay, I know what I'm doing. So, um, <laughs> thank you, know. you for the sacrifices. <laughs> yes. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, this has been an amazing conversation. Mm -hmm. Once again, thank you so much for taking the oh, time. Oh, you guys are awesome. You're awesome. And um, I <laughs> cannot wait to delve into your world of the novelizations. Um, I haven't had a chance to finish uh, Heat yet. And Marcella loaned it to me. Marcella loaned that book to me. Um, and so I'm going to get into that. And then, of course, you know, Thank once you. The it comes out and then a Wonder Woman novel. Yeah. Ooh. I order that immediately. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you, Nancy. You were amazing. You were awesome. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And hello to all my fellow Scoobies. Yay. Hey. So that was Nancy Holder. 
How'd you like her kids? Um, Isn't she great? I know. Let us know. You, sh- you guys should totally. Uh, we totally forgot to ask her like where to find her online and all that stuff. We'll make sure to post. Nancyholder.com. Yeah. And I'm sure um, Google like put Nancy Holder in Twitter. <laughs> and um, I-, I know that she's on Twitter because that's how we found her. She was nice enough to uh, answer my request for her to be on the show. And she's she just Nancy Holder on Facebook. Yeah. So go look her up, follow her, like her, buy her books. And she really does. She told us she was listening to Christoph Beck's music while she proved her book and she posted it on Facebook. Best job ever. Best job ever. Oh, so she good. really does have the best job ever. It's so amazing. All right. So now we're going to get into graduation day part. Duh. Duh. Season three, episode 22. And as Marcella said, <laughs> original air date of July 13th, 1999. 1999 July. July July from May to July to July we were stressed out guys super stressed out like that shit wasn't even cute that wasn't that wasn't fun Mm-mm. like it, it wasn't an okay situation you know what actually like we said we get it no yeah I, I moved to Pittsburgh in 98 so yeah I was in it at that point I was there that was mm-hmm. it wasn't fun no this episode also written by and directed by Joss Whedon and on Ascension Day Buffy and her friends prepare for the ultimate battle as they face off against the mayor and a horde of vampires we got lots of guest stars Harry Groner as Mayor Richard Wilson Danny Strong even though he doesn't does he speak nope Jonathan Levinson Larry Bagby as Larry Blaisdell yeah you're Research was hard, Larry. <laughs> Mercedes McNabb as Harmony Kendall. Ethan Erickson as Percy West and Elijah Dushku as Faith. So um, we're picking right up, right where we left off, where Faith is being uh, off somewhere, uh, carried away. And um, Buffy's just like, fuck, man, I can't oh, believe I did that. Oh, and she, she goes out. out. It was all for naught. Mm-hmm. All for naught. She leaves the murder weapon behind. First of all, you're not good at crime terrible you're terrible at crime you don't leave your fingerprint at least wipe the shit off why would you leave it there just left it there and she skulks away just as the mayor has arrived yeah i guess she hops off the balcony or Mm -hmm. something and he's like coming in and he sees what's happened like he sees the aftermath Mm -hmm. of what's what's gone Uh, what we forgot to mention in the in uh, part one is that you know uh, while he was eating his box of demon spiders one of his minions was like hey we got word this trouble at faith's yeah yeah he was immediately upset. Mm-hmm. So he gets there and he is just, he's pissed and he's scared. He's mm-hmm. terrified like a real parent. And the horde, the, his minions are just like, they're not here. And he's find them. Yeah. He's, he wants them found now. Right. And he's just like, he's beside himself. He's like, panicked. He's really, he's really concerned about his faith. baby's missing. And he even mentioned something like, you know, my faith, she would, you know, this is good. She would take the fight outside. She doesn't like being caged in. She'll be okay. She'll be okay. She'll, She'll be, be all right. She'll be, he's really worried. He is. He's so concerned. As we go back to uh, Willow and Oz are now looking over Fevered Angel. And he's uh, making some embarrassing fever dream declarations of love to Willow. <laughs> and my favorite is when she tells Oz. And he's like, you too? <laughs> She's like, he thought I was Buffy. Like, you too? <laughs> now, I'm sorry, guys. I, you know, Joss, I love every decision you make. You are. We bow down in your mm-hmm. presence. But you should have gone with the Oz scene instead of the yeah. Willow scene. Because that would have been hilarious. So funny. That exact scene, yep. but with Oz. Yep. <laughs> that, would, that would have been totally worth it. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been amazing. And then just flip the whole thing. Have him come out all confused. <laughs> right. And have her say, uh, you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would have been great. Would have played great. <laughs> but Willow, she's so she feels so guilty because she's happy. Because she's, she's just the damn thing. Yeah. She's she's in she's in afterglow mode. She is. And she just doesn't know what to do. She's got a lot of emotions going on. She's she's feeling really good about it, but yet she's guilty because everything is to shit mm-hmm. around her. But um also in the same as I I think a lot of us have felt <laughs> those mm-hmm. same panicky emotions after that first time glow. The first time feelings of uh you know, oh my god, this was amazing, that was so fun, or it wasn't so fun, or mm-hmm. that's what all this was about, or I don't uh, remember. <laughs> or, <laughs> or feeling guilty because, mm-hmm. you know, you have been brought up in a very religious household mm-hmm. where you're not supposed mm-hmm. to be doing what you're supposed to, what you just did. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of conflicting emotions yeah. at that point in time. And she's like, I'm so happy, but everything's such shit right now. But I'm so happy. I feel so bad that I'm so happy. 
And then Buffy comes in. All hi. Hi guys. All bra scaler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She is. <laughs> and she's like, I need a minute alone with my lava. Ugh. And then this beautifully seen, beautifully shot scene. It's really good. Like it actually gives me chills mm-hmm. every time I see it. Um she forces Angel to drink from her. She in like, the weirdest way. She like punches him a couple times. She's like, you know, tries to tries to level with him, like, yo. I tried. He was like, Oh, I need to drain a slayer. Faith. Everyone immediately is like, <laughs> We got this is what Faith is for. We got yeah, Faith. Yeah, ain't shit. Right. This is why Faith went to the dark side. So then here again is my question with this long term plan. You bring Faith, he drains her, Mm -hmm. because at this point we still think it's drained. Right. Which is killed. Right, yeah. That would have ended the Slayer line, right? Or no, we would have had a new little bitch come up. Yeah. And where would have she come from? Who would she have been? Would she have come to Sunnydale? Because apparently. I'm pretty sure the council would have been like, no. (laughs) Send her to Ohio. There's a hellmouth in Ohio. There's plenty of work for her there. Yeah. (laughs) Just. Just, but please. then you still got Buffy, who's now a murderer. Mm-hmm. Or so she, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. After um, and what would what would that have done? She's okay with being a. She was. This was the plan. She was going to be a murderer. Yeah, because like uh, even Xander had made a when she f- decided this is what she was going to do. Xander made the comment like, "I don't want to lose you," and Buffy's like, "Oh, I'm not going to get hurt." And she's like, "No, no, no. That's not what I that's meant." Not what I meant. Because once you kill this broad, and still even then she's like, Pfft. "Right." Wow. Okay, I was really, trying to Buffy? show some. Because yeah, all right. Because I don't think like you stabbed her in the gut and you didn't handle that, and she got away, mm-hmm. and you didn't handle that too well. No, had you actually murdered Faith? Look how you handled her murdering someone. Right. Oh. You couldn't even sleep. You were having nightmares. She would have killed herself. Mm-hmm. It, it, there's just no way she would have handled it. So maybe the council did kind of set all this up, maybe in a long term plan to get rid of both of them. Hmm. I like it. <laughs> Devious. <laughs> so she uh, uh, she tries to level with Angel, like, hey, this is what you got to do. He's like, no. Yeah. With his eyebrow. He's like, Faith, it's I killed her. Squint acting. You didn't kill her. You didn't. You didn't. I mean, you know. No. She because kind of looked dead on the back of that truck. But, but if she thought that, if she thought that she actually did kill her, why didn't she just hop down off of the right. fucking balcony and, and chase after, after the, the truck? truck. And then drag her to... Yeah, no. Mm-mm. You didn't want it bad enough, no. Buffy. Angel resists. She punches him a couple times to get the demon out. Which I don't know why that brings... That never happened before. The other times you guys fought. No. I don't... Whatever. And then she, like, forces him to her neck. Which is a hilarious shot. Because his it's eyes... Because like, just the one eye. And he's oh. like, huh? 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 <laughs> ah! Food! And he drinks! And she tells him, no, you can do this. Just don't take it all. Right. And it's like, you're assuming I'm going to be able to stop. <laughs> I'm fevered. I'm half dead. You think I'm going to stop? Yeah. Bad plan. No. Yeah. She should have. She should have trusted Willow or somebody, at least one person and be like, look, I am telling I am offering myself to Angel. I'm giving him permission to do this. But if shit goes awry, I'm going to need you to dart him. Yeah. And what a beautiful tracking shot. Oh, it's so good. All the way around them. Yes. As they fall to the ground. And she has that moment where she grabs the side, like his side. Yeah. And lifts her knee. It gets pretty dirty. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, I'm really confused about my feelings sometimes about this scene. And then she kicks out. Mm -hmm. Shatters this table in two. She, like, crushes a, Mm -hmm. a silver or metal picture or something because he has those in the house for whatever reason he has like medieval (laughs) dishware i don't know why (laughs) but it gets just like it's like so dramatic and like the the swelling of the music and then finally there's that moment where he's about to cross the line Mm -hmm. too much and we get this real close-up shot of her eye and a single tear Mm -hmm. and it's just like pulls out oh god and he still is still Still going he's still eating her still going it still goes on for a second after she goes limp yeah and then he like rolls off like, oh my god, what did I do? <laughs> Buffy. <laughs> there he is. There he's back. No longer interested. So he uh, take carries her to the 
to the hospital. Yep, he takes her and to the hospital. And starts, like, you know, she lost a lot of blood, bit by something, and he rips like, the handle off the door. Right. And the doctor's like, hey, you guys been doing drugs? <laughs> <laughs> Not her, she's clean. Okay. And then, uh, so we find out that miraculously there's only one hospital in town, yep. and they've only got one corridor because. How did he find Faith? Right? <laughs> And they put her in the room right directly opposite of Buffy. Right right next door. So Angel's out in the hall and the mayor hears what's going on and mm. he's just like, hmm. Oh gonna, well, well, yeah. So the mayor's in Faith's room and mm-hmm. they start telling him like, there's no hope. She's kidney damage, yeah. like brain damage. Like she's going to, there's no, she's never coming out of this. She looks so frail she and does. so young. Yeah. You know, and he's like. You know, uh, fussing with her. And then he hears that another girl with blood loss has come in. And, you know, right away he thinks that, yeah. So he walks around and finds an unconscious Buffy. And he's going to kill her. Um, He uh, tries to smother her Mm -hmm. with With his his hands hands, Mm -hmm. right there. And he's so calm about it. Doesn't even care. So and this nurse is like, sir, you're still the mayor. Yeah. You're like in full on public. Uh (laughs) And he's just like. Yeah, pinching down. He's ready to. And she she tries she tries to grab him, and he she's just like, oh my god. <laughs> and she runs out into the hall looking for someone, and Angel comes in and kind of throws him across yes. the room. And there is a uh, a magical showdown. This was a bit too far for me with his his word choice here. <laughs> um, he he makes that funny comment about you know oh, someone's been eating their spinach. Yeah, he's you know. Like, well, he's like Angel interrupts him, throws him up, and he's like. Uh, don't do that. He's like, oh, I do that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, something about, he goes, misery loves company. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking to share, yeah, misery loves pain. And I'm looking to share some with you and your whore. You and your whore. Mm-hmm. Venomous. There's venom dripping yeah. off the word whore. You just called a 17 year old high school girl a whore. She has had exactly one sexual partner, sir. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Now your faith. I got, yes. You look up whore. <laughs> you might see faith. Faith LeVay. There she is right there. <laughs> Which, who gave her that last name? When did, Pain? The, yes. Where they did, never mention it in the show. No. Who gave her that At last name? what point did she become Lahane? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Kind of uh, like Harmony Kendall. Do we ever see Harmony? I know. When I just read that, I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just something you guys threw in there. <laughs> okay. Um, But it's also... Like, the mayor has, you know, many more words to say to Angel before this, but it's kind of not fair to put Boreanaz up against Harry in this scene, um, because, you know, all he's really got to offer is, like, his eyebrow and squint acting. Yes. There's no physical. (laughs) No, like, like, Harry. I don't want to see him beat up this guy. (laughs) Harry is, like, chewing up scenery. Like, he's Mm -hmm. just like, and give me the salt. (laughs) And and Angel's just like, Boreanaz is just. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not gonna let you get her. So kind of not fair. A kind of an unfair matchup there. And and then, and then the mayor's just like, yeah, he's see like, you soon. Right, exactly. He, he collects himself. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're right, you're right. Mm-hmm. Not here, not now. Mm-hmm. I got you. Oh, 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 I'm gonna see you again. <laughs> you just, well, I got something for you. I got something. You just wait. So he got. Angel comes out into the hall and everyone's kind of like, what the fuck? What? Well, you're better. Oh, you look, uh, look at me yeah. right, but, Angel, but Buffy's... So another reason why Buffy should have like had a confidant and be like, yo, yeah, maybe not attack Angel because that's what everybody... Like, Giles, <laughs> gonna suit, yeah. Giles is looking at him sideways. Xander obviously has words to say. Willow's confused. I love that too. He's just like, oh, good to know when the chips are down. You'll, you'll eat your girl. Right. She kind of offered herself. I didn't. It's not like I. She said it was okay. <laughs> what was I supposed to? She hit me like a lot. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I'm oh sorry. I'm, I'm not human, but I was, I'm. I was so sick. So sick. Until you guys are there. You just don't know. <laughs> so she in. In the meantime, has a very prophetic dream buffy and faith share a prophecy dream like yeah. i'm not clear i'm assuming that faith is also having this dream and they're they're sharing the stream i'm hoping she does because so they're in faith's in the dream they're in faith's apartment and you know the, she does the miles to go mm-hmm. <clears throat> seven three seven three oh count, count down to seven three oh and there's a cat there's some packing like, i've always want oh she's like what are we gonna do with this cat 
Isn't that the point? They kind of take care of themselves. And I'm like, is that a grown up Miss Kitty Fantastico? <laughs> I keep meaning to look at the cat's coloring, but I keep forgetting. I don't think so. I thought Miss Kitty was black. She was. She had like a little white feet. And yeah. And I a think little, this is cat, that a calico? Yeah, I think this yeah. was like a gray Nobody or tabby. Maybe. Why um, does Boreanaz think heavy breathing is acting? <laughs> He does it all the time. Heavy breathing and the squinting. It's like the wind in his eyes. It's like he's like Michael Damien from Young and the Restless. Look it up, guys. Mm -hmm. I know not everybody will know that. Oh, God, he is. He really is. Rock (laughs) on. He really is. I don't know how Giles keeps his cool around him at all. Ever. I don't, I don't know either. I feel like Giles should have whooped that ass a couple, like at least once. There should have been at least one good punch in his mouth. And Angel I mean, he does take... have that moment where he comes to his house and he was just like, <laughs> I need I to just... be invited. Oh, I'm aware. He's like, <laughs> 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 Oh, I know. Oh, believe me, I know what you need. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I feel Hold like on. he should have kept I that. Need... Yeah. <laughs> I need this weapon. Hold on. I feel like he oh. should have kept that attitude up the entire rest of. The rest Forever. Of the, exactly. Forever. To this day in the comics, he should shit fuck there you. Should, <laughs> there should still be a consistent mm-hmm. amount of fuck you from Giles. My pinky Angel. nail never grew back, <laughs> by the way. I hate you. So this dream, which I never usually understand what's going on in these prophecy dreams, but I think I kind of got the gist of this one, mm-hmm. especially since we got the breakdown of the countdown to 730. But, um... There's like packed boxes all around and uh, Buffy's like, what are you going to do with all this? Face like, take it. It's yours. Mm -hmm. And Buffy's like, you know, I can't use all this. But Faith is like, Faith is like, you know, take what you need. And I assume that that's more like, you know, take the parts of Faith that you need. Yeah, exactly. To to make yourself a better slayer or to deal with this situation that's going on. And um but the one thing that's just kind of like really spot on and just like it's not cryptic is when she's like, uh, I don't know if she asks what to do about the mayor, but she says Faith tells her human weakness. Human weakness. It never goes away. Which even is, to him. that was the only reason why I kind of thought maybe it wasn't Faith's dream also, because why would she give him up? She loves him. I feel like. But she does say, like, there's a lot of new stuff going on in her head. Yeah. And I also think that deep down, Faith knew that this was wrong. Yeah. Like, this is not the the path she should have chosen. She may absolutely love him, um, but I just don't think that... I I think that deep down, she knew at a subconscious level that this wasn't the right path. This wasn't the route she was supposed to take. Yeah. And that he would be better off and everyone else would be better off if he would just... You know, she did just exterminate him. Go ahead and... Because she still... I, I feel like if Faith was a lot... Because she still didn't know mm-hmm. what he was going to turn into. Right. Had she seen that, she may have changed sides. She may have decided to... Like, yeah, I was... Ooh, ooh, I've made ooh. a terrible mistake. You're all on oh, your own. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't want to be with you, and I don't want to... I'm I just going to go back to Boston. This is <laughs> too much. And there's a really sweet moment right after the dream where Buffy wakes up and she goes and she sees Faith and Faith is fucked. Like her face is all bruised up and she kisses her on the forehead. Yeah. And it's like, this is, there is a certain amount of sister hood between the two of them. I wish we had reached it several months before. They just never get it quite right. Right. Ever. Ever. Even after this point, they still (laughs) don't get it quite right. Are you the best slayer? Am, Am I, I the good slayer? slayer? That's my favorite. I love that. I want a shirt that says that. <laughs> and it's and the and she just is like, yeah, I think I know what to do. Mm. And so the troops rally. Right. So I mean, I say what I I joke a lot about Buffy not being smart, mm-hmm. but she she makes up for it. Like she can she can plan a, a good battle yeah she's like she's very uh, good with her military stylings yeah. and uh figuring out the best way to because like when you think when you watch what goes down and then you think about this was buffy's plan mm-hmm. like this is what she came up with like this i don't know awesome if, plan i don't know if i would have ever come up with that no <laughs> put in that situation not at all <sighs> so snyder's like preparing for graduation day and everyone's getting ready and they are there's these little scenes through, you know, thrown in with Percy mm-hmm. and Harmony, Harmony, and they're getting the school ready. Right. They're preparing the kids. They're not leaving the rest of the school out this time. Right. They're preparing for battle. Which, yeah. And I wonder if 
they had never given if they had never acknowledged Buffy at prom like that would they have would they have done that yeah I don't know because it's like you don't because that that acknowledgement of what Buffy has means to their class is saying oh we know that shit's weird Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah and so them now including them all Mm -hmm. in all this and giving them a chance of survival by arming them yes (laughs) so now it's like all right you guys know she's like there's some shit going down yeah and I can't do it on my own this time. Right. And, it's bigger than me. And it's only fair that you guys know what's up because this is that they're they're yep. they're they're gonna be led to slaughter otherwise. Yeah. So they start to gather their friends or the students, other students, and they get to graduation. Not before uh Willow and Oz have a nice little quickie in the Right in the van. And they're packing up the library. We don't know why. Okay. But they're packing right. up the library. I totally missed that. And then like towards the end, I was thinking, did Giles at least get his books out of there? Yeah. <laughs> so Wesley and Cordelia are in the library later on, and they're packing up the library. But there is a really funny, was it in? Yeah. So earlier on in the um, episode, there's a moment. It's my Cordy Burn of the Week where mm. Cordelia walks in. And she's like, I demand an explanation. <laughs> and Xander's like, for what? And she's like, Wesley. And he's like, inbreeding <laughs> and she was like so f- so very funny any minute i'm sure to laugh <laughs> so apparently little bitch wesley called her crying you called a teenager you called a teenager crying about that you lost your job fired fired you're not fired from the watchers council no. yet new no. so it wasn't even like you were officially fired you were right. just relinquished of your buffy duty so like are he and cordelia dating now because there was that moment at the prom where <laughs> we forgot to talk about that. Where Wesley was like, "Oh yes, Giles." Um, Ooh, uh, uh, and do Giles you think like, he's like? I don't want to do anything inappropriate, but do you think if I ask Cordelia, go oh, for God's sake, she's eighteen, and, and you have the emotional, emotional? <laughs> maturity of a blueberry scone? <laughs> have at it. So don't have at it. She's no, still a high school senior, high school. and can you're a grown we, man. Can we at least wait a, a month? Right. Just let her, so she graduates. Just let her graduate. Get the fuck out of high school so she can no longer say that she's a high school student. How old do you think Wesley's supposed to be? 20s? I'm going to, I'm going to say mid-20s. <laughs> Late 20s. Okay. Late 20s I can get on board Late with. Late 20s. Yeah. That's the best I can do. Mm-hmm. Too then, old? Still too old. Too old. Still way too fucking old. Mm-hmm. But I also have a hard time to believe that they were at prom together quote mm-hmm. unquote and they this is the first time they kissed mm-hmm. so they're probably I know how it. Cordelia rolls right. we know how Cordelia rolls uh uh-uh. uh so they're packing up the library and then they start to I don't know cause be he weird. comes back Wesley comes back and he's like and <laughs> Buffy's just like fuck off <laughs> we don't need the council here and he's like right. I'm not with the I just wanna help yeah just let me help and it's like oh, good on you alright good okay. on you mate alright So, in the course of my life, I've seen many a bad kiss on screen. Many. Like on purpose bad kisses? No, I don't think on purpose. Okay. Like uh, 16 Candles. Mm, Yes. No, 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 not 16 Candles. Pretty in Pink. Right. Andrew McCarthy and uh, Molly Ringwald. Yeah. The end of the movie. Supposed to be this big, wonderful moment. There to get... (laughs) He eats her face pretty much. It's disgusting. It's really, really unattractive. Okay. This might be that. <laughs> this is so fucking awkward. And it's, I don't even know how they filmed this. It's like neither one of them has never kissed a person before. Ever. I don't understand. I'm going to go ahead and say that it was all Wesley's fault. Mm-hmm. And they give it another go. Like, well, that could have been weird, but give it another go. But then, like, the second time, like, to see Cordy, she's just like, mm. <laughs> like, no. Nope. shame. Nope. <laughs> And he's like, I'll send you a postcard. Won't that be neat? <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was my runner up for burn. <laughs> Which this is why I love this show and why I love Joss Whedon, because in season one of Angel, mm-hmm. after our poor departed Doyle leaves mm-hmm. us, we get the rogue demon hunter on right. the scene. Rogue uh-huh. demon hunter. And they have another kiss. Do they? Yeah. Because she's trying to get... Oh, that's thinks, right. Yeah. She's trying so to she get just them. grabs him and kisses him. Right. And he, like, grabs her up, and it's a good kiss. Well, sir, you've learned some things in your travels. Uh-huh. <laughs> and she's like, it didn't work. And he's like, really? I thought it went way better than the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I love this show. Yes. Because you tie nice it all together. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
season or two from then, you'll be tying women up in your closet. You've learned a lot of things. You learn a lot. (gasps) Wesley, where are you doing this research? Right? What are you picking up along the way? Where was your sabbatical, sir? Yikes. Um... It's just, it's gross, kids. It's a, it's, it's not a it's good awkward. kiss. I don't wish this kiss on anyone. Mm-mm. And from that point on, they're, they're done. It's, it's the, like, the love affair's right. over. All right. So we got past that. Mm-hmm. So the key here, the takeaway, kiss your crush. <laughs> As it may, you may be pining for nothing. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> Because that's a shame. That is what a, sh- a waste. Yeah, it could be like a, a, a waste of months of just like, ooh, and what ifs and blah, blah, blah. I want to find out that you guys have zero chemistry. Zero. Or they don't know how to kiss. Mm-hmm. Or they just don't Which know. Which is mm-hmm. wasteful. Yep. I got to say, I've been um, in the situation that I, they, I have come across. Um, things are about to get a little R-rated, guys. <laughs> I have uh, encountered at least one gentleman who uh, I was, ooh. Worst, mm. terrible, mm. terrible fucking kisser. And you don't know what to do. What do you say? You're terrible. just like, talk about eating your face. Mm-hmm. Like, that was like, wow, okay. And just like, slob. And just like, wow. Why is my upper lip in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> like, just super, just like, cool and attractive fucking dude, but just like, mm, could not get that right. Mm. And there was another guy that, uh, for years, I just like lusted after him. Just a really super good looking, just like model type dude. And we like hung out a couple times and yada yada. And it finally got to a point and, and we had sex. I fell asleep during. <laughs> <laughs> during? <laughs> during. That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> that is wow. That's you're just like sorry. <laughs> really wasn't that sorry. That is the one and only time in my wow. life I would have rather been sleeping than having that. Yeah, that was you. You do your thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> awful. Just fucking awful. Did he notice? I don't know. I don't even care. Like I think, <laughs> like I woke up at some point, and like it You're was, still here. it was like a couple of minutes. Like I was at his place, and I was like, you know, I fell dozed off or whatever, and woke up, and I was like, all right, let's just wrap this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. Like I got things to do, <laughs> and this is not one of them. I know it. I could be washing my car right now. <laughs> You thought we were going to beat it. It's so cute. Oh, no, you. It's so cute. I'm going to go. Please <laughs> oh, never, that's, ever uh, call me. During. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's rough. <laughs> that is rough. So, yeah. So, sometimes you, uh, the pining might not be worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kiss your crush. Mm-hmm. So, Willow and... Oz do have the worst timing. They're just like, yeah, <laughs> we need to get the fertilizer in the van. Let's do this. Uh, Again? Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh-huh. Fine. <laughs> there is a moment. I don't remember if it's in part one or part two. It might be in part one when they're researching. It's part one. Trying She's to... like stroking her hair. She's just full on stop. Yes. She's like, she gets the... <laughs> 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 <You're> like, what is <laughs> it? Life ending crisis. We got. <laughs> she gets the feel. I'm gonna need you to stay away from me. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's it's. I think it's Seth Green. I don't know what. Because there was a, also at the end of part two. They're sitting outside. Mm-hmm. And he's stroking the back uh-huh. of her head. And I, I think that's just Seth. It's just Seth Green. <laughs> Your wife is. And his wife is adorable. Yes, they are. I I, I they are think so I've, cute. I follow him on Instagram, and they're just the cutest. They are so cute. They're ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I would love to meet him in a. He's also my a crown jewel for my wall. I need. Oh yeah, Seth. Maybe come to a con or mm-hmm. something. Or... An alley. Oh yeah, I um, I might actually cry. I would. I would cry. I'd like <laughs> <to meet her. laughs> I would actually probably cry real tears for Allison yeah. Hannigan. <laughs> Alexis, I would just be like <laughs> rogue, rogue demon hunter. <laughs> rogue demon hunter. <laughs> I would like to meet Fred too. I already have. I bought that. That's one of the ones I bought. Who? Fred. Fred. Oh, Amy Ackers. oh yeah. Amy but I would like to actually meet her one day. Right. But she the chances sweet. of that. But I don't know. She's doing that X Men show on it, Fox. It so. might. Um. It might up her game a little bit. She might. Might come out of the woodworks. Joseph Morgan's gonna be on that show too. Is he? Mm-hmm. Little Klaus Michelson action. He's another one. I don't think I can meet him in a con because it's, it's his whole demeanor, everything, his accent, about him. and I, <laughs> that that would happen. That's what. 
I'm just, I'm just, I know you are. Because <laughs> it happened to me with Milo Ventimiglia. Didn't think it would. Really? So we were at a I panel. I feel like it would. That's and so he was talking at this panel, and we have it on video somewhere. Mm. Um, he was talking, and he was talking about that show he has on Crackle. Right. And I was like, great show. And I didn't think he, I didn't mean to do it. And uh. he was just like, thank you. And looked right at me, and I was like, <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I asked him a question later on, and it was still kind of like, "Oh my god, why am I like geeking out over Milo Ventimiglia?" I, it's something. It's weird because I didn't think of him that way on Heroes, mm-hmm. but this is us. He's like kind of bulked up, mm-hmm. and he's got that nice shaggy haircut. Mm-hmm. He's finally like, shaved that stash. He's a grown ass man. He is a grown <laughs> man. He used to piss me off on Gilmore Girls so much. I hated Jess. Yeah. I, I'm not Team Jess at all. No, never will be. I'm Team None of those bitches. I am Team Logan 100. percent That's the smarmy dude from college. Yeah, I like him. Man, I, I think just I was, like him. I think I was Team <laughs> him until we got to until they revised it until right. like the new season. Like really, <laughs> I was like, you were engaged. Like, Yard. Well, he's not a cheater. You Stop. Shit. All of you. <laughs> you're, you're all terrible people. <laughs> all of you. But I terrible. still want to live in Stars Hollow. Ugh, fuck Stars Hollow and everybody <laughs> in it. Except Sookie. I love her. <laughs> I love her. So we are actually at graduation now. Mm. And <laughs> Snyder, to the end. Love him. He's, I saw that gesture. You will see me after graduation. No, I won't. I bet you I won't. I bet you I won't. <laughs> Even if apocalypse hadn't happened, I bet you. <laughs> fuck you. I got my diploma. What do you get? We are. We can fight now. Uh, no, actually, right. <laughs> we, let's do this, Snyder. <laughs> I've been waiting four fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> so the mayor comes. You know, w- Willow comes running it. Did I miss anything? Did it happen? Are Nothing. we fighting? We're Nothing. Mm-hmm. Fixing her clothes. You know she smelled like it too. Like you, you know she did. Like sex. Yeah. You know she did. Y'all did it in the back of a van. Mm-hmm. There on was- some fertilizer. <laughs> you smell bad. <laughs> Just to be honest, you smell bad. <laughs> so he gets uh, the mayor. They introduce the mayor, and it becomes apparent that he's going to do his full speech. His full speech. <laughs> and they're like evil. <laughs> It's like just to send already. <laughs> and then the eclipse happens. Mm-hmm. And he's like, ow. And he's like, oh, that's a shame because I had. And he pulls out like 85 more fucking index cards. <laughs> he's like, I had this part. How long about- was <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I'm, I'm not saying that Sunnydale was a totally white neighborhood. There's mm-hmm. one or two black but- kids in there. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I grew up. I, I, as soon as he was like, oh, this is, there's an eclipse. <laughs> All the black parents would have been, it's time to go. Get your shit. See, get in the car. <laughs> We're not going to wait around and see what's happening. <laughs> here's the thing. There probably was like 25% more <laughs> black people in the audience. And then that happened. Gone. Gone. Ghost. Ghost. They're not there anymore. See, They're out. You see all these empty chairs yep. and shit. Oh. Oh. Well, what happened uh, to Jamal? <laughs> And there was, no. we did miss a really no. funny part. I forgot one of my favorites. This is why Harry uh, Groner's just amazing. Mm. When they're getting ready for battle, mm. he's telling them, you know, don't worry. Sun's not going to be an issue. Right. You know, and he's like, let's watch the foul language. <laughs> <laughs> I can't curse. Let's, I can't. What? Well, watch the. We're massacring a lot. <laughs> You're kids. going to ascend to a giant demon. And I can't say fuck. And eat <laughs> all of the kids at their graduation ceremony. <laughs> but I can't drop an F bomb. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. All right. <laughs> so he turns into a giant snake. Like huge. Really, really like, big. Really big snake. And kind of dumb looking. And so Snyder is just like, all right, buddy, <laughs> I'm still the principal here and you won't listen to me. This is not what we're doing. And he eats him. This is not orderly. <laughs> he eats him. <laughs> I forget who it was. There's a take to somebody watch that happen. And they're, and they're like, 
<laughs> They're so upset. So then they bust out fucking flamethrowers. Yeah, they are. Um, they, they're prepared. Yes, they're prepared. Mm-hmm. Which I would also like to know when did the training actually happen? Yeah, because they're using words it's like, like a day. flank mm-hmm. and you know first wave. He and, just and, you, know, you guys are the hand to hand combat now and like <laughs> when? Yeah, when? <laughs> and the the parents that stayed. When the kids immediately, all the kids threw off their robes, right. they were geared up. <coughs> yes. And so there's, on why their does, on their back flank. Why does my baby have a yeah, battle axe? Yeah. Where'd, that, where'd you get that? <laughs> where'd you get that? So a behind mace? the kids, when they all go, you know, the punk bitches that apparently weren't in on the plan, mm. and the parents try to run and leave. Right. There's vampires. Right. And they can't get out. So then... The vampires are like, fuck, these kids got flamethrowers and, like, flaming arrows. Flaming We're out of here. <laughs> so they turn around the leap, but there's Percy and, and Angel. Angel and Wesley. In his suit. He tried so hard. In his suit. He tried And so immediately hard. gets fucked. Immediately get clo- gets clotheslined. He's like, he takes two steps and just, like, boom, out. Feet overhead. He's done. He's done. He's out. Man's done. Yeah. And I do have to say, Percy looked kind of good standing there next to Angel. He I was did. like, oh, that you. Was, all right. That was all right. Okay. All right. All right. You're you. still a piece of shit. Yes. As we will come to find it. <sighs> Fuck you, Percy. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. So when he eats poor Snyder, <laughs> Buffy's like, Fuck, call him back. <laughs> I think Larry gets killed. Yeah. Larry gets hit by the right. snake tail. Which, yeah, that was kind of a... That, that's it? You just get hit by You the, just hear a neck break, and it's, it's like... Oh. oh, okay. Sorry. And also, Harmony. We Gets see, eaten. Yes, we see mm-hmm. that Harmony um, catches some fangs. Which makes no sense, continuity-wise. No. When she comes back. Nope. Because, because this vampire stopped during this battle to feed her her blood, too. We did all that. Nope. You suck, I suck. Nope. That, that, that didn't happen. Harmony's no. dead. She's right. just dead. Right. There's no way. No. There's no way. There's Not too that much I don't going enjoy on. her. Yes. I mean, yes. She's a, a very added bonus. She's very mm-hmm. hilarious. Mm-hmm. I, I do appreciate what she has to offer later in Buffy, as well as Angel. Yeah. But this doesn't make any sense. No. Because this is too much going on right now. There's no fucking way this vampire just, like, dragged her off somewhere and, like, fed her. Yeah. And took the time. To feed her. To you turn know. her. And no. That didn't happen. Nah. Cordelia gets to stake her first vampire. Yes. Which she's been involved in stakings. Like a vampire fell. Yeah. And Xander staked it. But she has never physically right. staked a vampire until this moment. And she gets it with a slayer move. A nice little yeah. slayer move, too. Yeah. Even though she's dressed like a bank teller again. With nude pantyhose mm-hmm. and white nurse sneakers, mm-hmm. it looks like. So then this is where the episode... It's been baller for me. Yeah, because the the moment when they well, she's like now mm-hmm. and they I get teared they, up. I get all chills. Yeah, I get goosebumps. And when they turn around and Percy and Angel, I'm like, oh my god, this is so great. This is so. And then it's so. Oh, then it goes bad. It goes weird. It goes real bad. Uh, this is when Buffy's like, hey, mm-hmm. with the knife. And until this point, when he's just like, huh? he's making demon noises, right? And that's fine. And even up until then. You know, she pulls out the knife and he's just like, "Mm -hmm." she's like, you know, it's like, blah, blah, blah. Look what I got. You want to get it back for me? Dick. (laughs) Good on you, Buffy. I like it. Good pun. (laughs) Yes. I've been thinking we might have to do a Buffy's pun of the week. Maybe. Yes. (laughs) Because that would have won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well played. Yeah. (laughs) And she starts to run. She takes off. And makes him chase her through Mm -hmm. the school. Mm-hmm. So he like gets himself all wrapped around in the school. Finally, she ends up in the library where there's like a shit ton of explosives. Yeah, they have a homemade bomb. Yeah, mm-hmm. they've been working overtime. I f- thought that there was only like a day in advance. That That's they a had lot. For where planning, did they buy this? But- I'm pretty sure they'd ended up on a watch list buying that much fertilizer and kerosene. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Even back then. Yeah. So um. And then she uh, then jumps he, out the window. She jumps out the window. Then uh, and the worst part of Buffy ever happens. The, the demon notices all of these explosives, and then he says, "He speaks." He says, in full actual words, "Well, gosh, <laughs> really." It just takes me out of it every time. Every like, time, it's so great, and I'm pumped up, and I'm like tearing up, and I'm like got goosebumps, and oh my god, they're gonna. Oh gosh. Kaboom! Never mind. Never mind. 
<laughs> and the reason that I include Jonathan in the in in our special guest star is because he gets the moment when it explodes. <laughs> he gets to hold Cordelia. <laughs> And she like he has, does. and he like protects her. Yes. So like we see him this like twice. Mm-hmm. That's that moment. And then he gets like before that he gets like pushed in a crowd <laughs> yes. or something. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. Big overture. <laughs> Big little show. We we won. This is why he killed Lester. We won because apparently he's not immortal anymore. As soon as he becomes and he ascends, he can be murdered. But they already knew that. Yeah, they know that. And that's why they set all this up. If it was that easy, why'd y'all worry about it? It's, I feel the second like, he became a giant snake, he was killable. I, I feel like all the worry was for nothing. For nothing. This like, really wasn't this hard. No. Um, mm-hmm. okay, we need so, to go through all this drama. Right. So, okay. So we let him ascend. Mm-hmm. Let him turn into the demon. Then we kill him. When he's killable then. Right. I feel like whatever made you unkillable, you should have just stuck with that. Yeah. You were killing it. How does You were in charge of a city. How did he, like... Why being a giant snake? Was that going to be better for you? Why was that better? Now, if he had shrunk back down into a man and then said, well, gosh... Yeah. Would have been into it. (laughs) Right. Because then he would have blown up, you know? But no. In season six, we're still finding bits of mare all over this exploded school. (laughs) Or season four. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me why... What was the... What was the end plan? He's going to eat everybody. I don't know. Was so he going to go to L.A. after, or was he just going to chill in the city, a big old snake? Right. Like, Can you switch back? I, what are you doing? You have a bad, bad, bad plan. This was not the best. No. Hmm. But then Giles comes through. What did Giles do? Giles wasn't doing anything. Uh, he wasn't fighting. He saved her diploma. <laughs> He went up to that stage and fished through all of those and got her diploma. Why? Because she deserved it. Because he's the best dad mm-hmm. ever. Yep. And he's like, there's a certain uh, thing that can be said about it. And she's like, fire, bad, tree, pretty. It's like, look, I don't have the mental capacity right now. <laughs> We're lucky I'm not dead. I can't do this with you right now. I'm going to, and she makes several comments about how I just want to sleep. Mm-hmm. I'm so tired. And there's a great moment where Wesley's like, can I get a defibrillator? I feel quite a lot of pain. He's so, they're like, he's, they've got him in a neck brace on a stretcher and he's there like pushed him through. So this is like, oh, I just, I just, can I get an aspirin? I just, I'm just quite, quite a, a bit of pain. Of pain. <laughs> and Giles is getting, he's, he thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> and I think it's Xander that says, you know, he made it through the fight. Mm-hmm. Angel made it through the fight. You're right. He tells her because Buffy's obviously looking around for yeah. him. He assures her that he made it through. He didn't get killed. And then she sees him through the smoke, through the smoke. And, and the agreement was if he made it, if they made it through after the fight, he was going to leave. Right. And for once, he fucking sticks to his word. Right. Thank you. Bye, Felicia. They have a long where they stare at each other for quite a long. There's a lot said in this glance. And then he leaves. <laughs> he just leaves. <laughs> and even she's just like, I don't care. <laughs> So tired. Fire bad tree. Pre- so tired. Deal with that tomorrow. <laughs> I don't have the I don't time write him a letter. I'll journal about uh, it or something. Yeah. I don't. So they're all just watching it burn. <laughs> so let it burn. And it's Oz who's like, let's take a moment. To, we made it. Right. And Buffy's like, oh, it was a hell of a battle. I mean, not the battle. High school. We made it. <laughs> and we're done. Okay. All right. I'm going to go home. Mm-hmm. I need to carb up and go to bed. And Buffy's like, if somebody could just wake me before college, that would be great. (laughs) (laughs) And I love that our last shot is like a burnt copy of the high school yearbook. What is it like? Rise up together or some shit? The future is now or some weird shit. Who makes these? Like, even mine was like really stupid. (laughs) And then that's it. That's season three. That's Buffy. That's our season three. Season three, guys. I can't believe it. So, ranking these bitches. All right. So, wait. No song. No song. Christoph Beck, you you rule. Shit ton of bodies dropped. It was like some Thank female you. student, like three more students, another like three vampires. Larry, poor Larry Snyder. Oh Harmony, uh, one other vamp, and Olvican and Mayor Richard Wilkins killed. Uh, random trivia. Yeah. Um, so apparently, according to the Buffy Wiki, this episode was not delayed in Canada. So a bunch of bootlegs were available. And Joss just said, bootleg puppy. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, that's just like, 
He's like, give the fans what they want. Give them what they want. They're going to do it anyway. Right. Fuck it. Like, why why waste a bunch of time and resources trying to stop the shit? Although I'm pretty sure if anyone... Shut up! (laughs) Do you want to watch this? (laughs) Join! Moral of this story. High school is only scary if a giant snake attempts to eat you during graduation. Otherwise, the people that made fun of you will most likely be running car washes and gas stations while you're living a life to the fullest. True, True story. True story, indeed. Because uh, those bitches, they, they've they peaked. They got nowhere to go at that point. No. So the ones that are uh, talking shit and trying to make your life miserable, your high, your high school experience terrible, they got nowhere to go. Nowhere to go but down. Yep. Fuck those people. All right, so now rankings i sure hope i can find it all right there we go season three rankings so favorite episode ma are we just gonna go we one can go, each yeah, or back and forth uh, we can go back and forth all right my number one is band candy mm, lover's walk okay my number two is lover's walk <laughs> <laughs> i would probably put band candy then <laughs> number three faith hope and trick agree four bad girls uh, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. All right, five, The Wish. Oh, I forgot about The Wish. Actually, no, I got to swap Wish. Wish would be my number two. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, and then Band Candy, and then, yeah. Okay, Um, number six, Enemies. Okay. Seven, Doppelgangland. Okay. Eight, Helpless. I... I know you're going to mm-hmm. disagree on that mm-hmm. one. I hate... <laughs> I hate him so much. I would probably put uh, Homecoming. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Number nine, the Zeppo. Yeah, that's pretty high up for that, but I like it. Yeah. Uh, Ten choices. I would probably put uh, Earshot there. Mm, Okay. Uh, Eleven, Graduation Day Part Two. Mm Mm-hmm fairly high mm-hmm. I would put these in a double block probably okay. together right well I 11 and they, they would go together yeah they go together but they're flipped so mm-hmm. like 12 is graduation day part one yeah I like two more than one yeah for sure right um 13 consequences I like that 14 prom Oh, this season is just so good. It gets really hard. There's not that many bad episodes yeah. in this season. Yeah, it was difficult but when they're bad <laughs> Ooh, are they're they beauty bad? and the beasts. They're beauty and the that the, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh fifteen earshot. I would put probably Dead Man's Party. Okay. Uh sixteen homecoming. I'm gonna go Anne. Uh, Seventeen Dead Man's Party. I would go amends. <laughs> Eighteen Revelations. I would agree with that. Nineteen Anne. Uh gingerbread. <laughs> 20 amends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, kids, it, when it goes bad, it goes real bad. <laughs> uh, I would probably throw. Uh... Mm, that's tough. Probably helpless would probably go in maybe somewhere around here. Okay. Uh, 21 gingerbread. Oh, fuck that shit. I fucking hate that episode. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Somewhere around there. And 22, Beauty and the Beasts. See, this is where I'm like, do I put Beauty and the Beasts last? Is that the absolute worst? It's the absolute worst for me because I can never remember what it is. <laughs> I looked at... Pete and Debbie. <laughs> I looked... I, I Every time, <laughs> man. Like, I looked at the <laughs> list of, of episodes and I was going through and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, Gingerbread's definitely the worst one. I'm like going through blah, 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 blah. And then I finally, I like start to look at the, um, the photos, like the screen caps of what's what. I was like, oh, fuck, that's Beauty and the Beasts? Pete. That's Daddy. the worst one. That is the worst one. Because I can never remember what the fuck it actually is. That is pretty bad. That is pretty bad. I keep trying to block it. I would, yeah, I would just have, uh, ugh. Dead Man's Party, Beauty and the Beasts, Gingerbread, and Helpless have to Helpless be. is your absolute worst. That, well, no, those four. Okay. Are probably the worst of the season for me. Okay. And yeah, I think you're right. Beauty and the Beast is worse than Helpless. It's, it's absolutely, because I mean... I really helpless, hate helpless though. Helpless went dark and but I liked it. 
I, I think that I, I liked it. And that guy is terrible and scary, but <laughs> he served a purpose. Strawberry. And there's He's gonna come back to freak me out again. Right. And there's still like it's still kind of weird as to the the his story, like that vampire. Like I still don't understand fully, like how he got. Where did they pick like, him up? Yeah, like <laughs> I like killing people. <laughs> hey, we're gonna take what? Hey, well, I need my pills. <laughs> Where are we going? But I need my pills. <laughs> so I don't. Pretty sure vampires don't work like that. No. Pretty sure your shit gets healed when you become a vampire. <laughs> right. So he's still. So it's just physical, Is not it placebo? mental. <laughs> I don't. Does he go crazy afterwards? I would just like a clear backstory on him. But I like the overall tone of that episode. And I also like how Buffy overcame. What was your favorite again? What was your number one? Band Candy. Oh. So kids. Like my top five was Band Candy, Lover's Walk, Faith, Hope, and Trick, Bad Girls, and The Wish. She picked Ripper over Spike, everybody. She picked Ripper over Spike. that in those regards like Spike and Lover's Walk was a little drunk yeah he was a little <laughs> drunk and sad and sappy and a little upset about life and you know yeah. a little sad sacky but I mean uh, <laughs> it's a pretty good uh, thing that the next That's... time you see old Spike he'll be climbing up a bed at you well, harsh light day. I, I, I really do. That's. I always think, what should I ask at panels? And it's not until we do these that I'm like, oh, I should totally ask that at a panel someday. Like, whose idea was that? Well, I want to ask uh, Mercedes McNabb. How many times did you need to film that because you accidentally giggled? Because that shit would have happened all day. We'll be here all fucking uh-huh. day, guys. Because <laughs> we know that they. We found out at our thing that they did. Remember, he told us that they went out. They had it. They went out on a date. Once. I totally missed that. Yeah. So, like, how did she film that scene? Like, was it before you guys went they out? They went out? Yeah, they went out. Weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but seriously, how'd she film that? I don't know. Like... Without laughing. I... It was hard enough for me to be around him the, what, three times I've met that man? It's just each time. I say, I'm like a, a child. I, I'm like, he's aged. He's older now. It's not going to happen. He opens his mouth and I'm like... <laughs> and it's not even an accent. No. <laughs> Which was very upsetting to me when I found that out. Um, yeah, that was that hurt my feelings a little bit. It I did. Was, I was I wasn't prepared for this. Like, oh. And then Wesley didn't have one either. And at least James still kind of sounds sexy with his. Yeah, but Wesley's voice, like the pitch of his voice, goes up a little bit, like two, three octaves higher. It's not sexy. No, it's not. It's not sexy at all. It's like at least if you're not going to talk in an accent, can you just bring your the put some bass in your voice, man? And I've often wondered is. Uh, has Allison just said, "Can you, can you do the Wesley tonight?" I just, <laughs> I'd really like the accent on my birthday. <laughs> just once a year on my birthday. That's all I'm asking. Just... You know what? I wouldn't. I would do the same. I would <laughs> if yeah. James Marsters. You're gonna call yep. me love hey. every day <laughs> when I wake up and when love, I go to sleep. Pet. <laughs> like this is happening. He called me darling because he stepped on my foot and I almost threw up. <laughs> And that was in his normal voice. Don't give me a spike voice, which we've noticed, though. He does kind of slip in and out of it sometimes. Bit. It's weird. You're yeah. just like, He's like some broken. Yeah, it's I don't. OK, so I have saved this until now, since now we're wrapped up. I have mm-hmm. one more question for the Buffy. We're continuing our Buffy Slays 2017. All right. So we talked about it a little bit briefly, but we'll put it out here to all of you guys. There were some, you know, comments made about why certain people weren't in the reunion. Uh-huh. And, you know, everybody was like, where's Faith? Where's Faith? I love that Clem, that James Leary was like, hey, guys. <laughs> I would have loved to have been invited, too. <laughs> he didn't care. He just really wanted to be there. I didn't see that. <laughs> And it's like, you think about it, you, like, we love what we got, Entertainment right. Weekly. We yes. love what we got. Thank you. For sure. But I would have left an entire issue. Yeah. Where we broke down seven seasons of Buffy and five seasons of Angel. Yeah. Where we talked about the top ten episodes, where we talked about the best villains. Right. We talked about the best heartbreaks, the best right. everything. The best loves, the most, you know. Right. The best uh, story arcs. Right. Or just, like, character development. You've done it with other shows. 
Right. We got to wait until we hit 50. <laughs> Buffy slays Nobody... 50 and I'll be fucking dead. <laughs> Nobody wants to see those pictures. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Some of them will be dead, which is upsetting. But yeah, it is. That's, yeah, that's. I think most of them would. Most of them, <laughs> including fifty. Yo, bro, we're like ninety. <laughs> <laughs> Reboot. I'm. I'm in a walker. Buffy's in a walker. Which makes me wonder when would she actually retire like is there a point because she's still doing it in the comics is there gonna come a point where buffy's just like oh hey i'm done i i really don't want to do this anymore can i not (laughs) (laughs) but so for buffy slays 2017 just follow all your loves on instagram because they're hilarious they're great if you're not following tom lank oh god what are you doing? You're missing out. Like, seriously, go run. To... He makes me belly laugh. He like, I can't. So it hurts. Funny. It hurts. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Like, all of it. Yeah, just go on his Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of it. Mm-hmm. And follow it all because it's just guaranteed just joy yeah. and laughter. And same thing with, with Larry. He's hilarious. He is. <laughs> he is. And he. he He's he, a good egg. He is. And, um, hey, Larry, you should come to Pittsburgh. Yes. You should do our show. Yeah. Please, We'd love to have you. And thank you, James Leary. We would love to have you. I loved meeting him in Cleveland that time. He was right. a doll. He was. He was so uh, so good. Hmm. What? Well, so what? Basically, what we're saying is every single member of Buffy was talented, is talented, continues to be talented, and if Entertainment Weekly could have had them all, I'm sure they would have. Right. But so, guys, don't throw shade. Asking why? Yeah. Somebody wasn't there. Because I mean, yes, it would have been great, but we live in an age now, like. You guys are lucky that this didn't go down, like, in the 90s. Right. Like, if this was, there's no, like, we had no way of knowing really what our fan, what our favorite actors or, you know, lore was up to anymore. You guys have so much access now. Yeah. Through social media that it's crazy. So you can kind of poke in to see what, what's up. Because most of these people, most of the scene, it was great to see them all together. Mm-hmm. But that was kind of the, the the draw for me, was to see them all together. And that's what, the that's what made me all misty and, mm-hmm. like... So, Who knew this? Uh, when we were in it, I would have never thought it would be what it never is today. Never. It's crazy how big this thing is. And it's getting bigger. That's the strange thing is that it every day my feed has something. Right. Every single day. Right. You know, never. Smallville doesn't have anything in my feed. Nah. There's nothing. I mean, I loved it. Charm doesn't have anything in my feed. No. Loved it too. Allison or Alyssa Milano. You're a fabulous human being. You're doing great work out there. Yeah. Good on you. Yeah. But. Nope, it's, it's not just Buffy. Some way that they just lighten it in a bottle. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm have... sorry. Stop lumping Angel in. I mean, it's an Angel. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it you was had your good. five seasons. It was I liked good. it. I enjoyed it. I J August, <laughs> right? Happy to have Wesley on there. Mm-hmm. Fred, not the same. Know, not Lindsay, but mm-hmm. it's different mm-hmm. animal. Mm-hmm. It was a little more grown up. Yep, and it wasn't like Buffy was kind of. I can absolutely see it kind of grew up with yeah. the audience. Yep. You know, there's life lessons in there. There's, you know, actual, you can see yourself in the storyline. You can see what's going on. But Angel's just like, he's, he's a cop drama. kind. It's of. a study of how not to treat people that you supposedly care about. Kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, Don't but, follow him as an example. He's a terrible person. No, yeah. Don't. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, Angel was good. We enjoyed it. And I will continue to continue to rewatch it. Which there was a little, um, I don't know if you guys watch Arrow, but this past week on Arrow, they kind of borrowed an angel storyline. Really? A bit, just a little tiny bit. Hmm. He fired everyone. Oh, oh, boot, boot. He said he couldn't do it. He didn't, he didn't want to, he didn't want to do this anymore. Did they end up in a bar singing karaoke? No, I wish they had though. Boring. So there's this, you'll find this hilarious. There's a character on Arrow who, uh, his name is Curtis. Mm. He's got a big fro, black man, gorgeous. Mm. He's so cute. He's their like little tech guy, but he also wants to fight and he goes out on missions with them. Big fro. (laughs) But when he goes out on missions, his hair is in cornrows. So here's our question. (laughs) Right before they go out, and I tweeted this to the show, they have not responded. (laughs) So right before you go out on missions, it's do or die. Mm -hmm. 
It's urgent. We've got to go. Yeah, yeah. Who's cornrowing Curtis's hair? Bro, cornrows take at least... Hours. Yeah. That's, hours. that's at least This is not a quick... That's at least an hour. Mm-mm. I'm going to... I don't mm-hmm. know how much hair he's got. Mm-hmm. I don't know how intricate these braids are, but... And then an who's hour. undoing them when he gets home? Right. And he doesn't wear a mask. He just spray paints this area, his eye area, black. So it feels like there's a lot more preparation that he needs to be doing uh-huh. before mm-hmm. urgent missions. And like, are they all sitting around in the arrow cave? Like, just like waiting. Seriously, Everybody Curtis, else like, is done. They're just like, do, do, do. There should be just one scene where they all get dressed really fast. Right. And they're all just like, oh, seriously, Curtis. The, 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 the. See, I got to call. I got to call my girl because she's got to come do my, my braids real quick because I can't get it. Just I can't right. get back here. I can't get Felicity. Can you? I can't. Because I'm. I, no, is it crooked? Well, we got to start over. Because, I mean, I can't go out here in crooked braids. Like, what? <laughs> the the victim is dead. Right. Does anybody have any grease? Because I'm going to need to oil my scalp. And I don't get it. <laughs> and they're not answering me, so they know it's wrong. <laughs> they know it. And they don't want to point out that they have fucked up. I mean, just a little, a little realism. I understand, like, this is all suspend your disbelief and whatnot but come on just come on something. don't don't act like i'm stupid all right guys i think that might be it that is it for season three yo this is like the longest episode we've ever done oh he's cute i've seen him on something he's in the cw ads that play all the time. Okay. all right so what did you guys think of graduation day part one and two and you can also send us your rankings of season three if you want you can leave us a voicemail message at 412-385-7250, or you can record an MP3 file, less than two minutes, or you can just send us an email yeah. with your rankings and stuff or your musings to revisiting Sunnydale at gmail.com. And uh, you can also get at us on Facebook at Revisiting Sunnydale, and you can also get at us on Twitter um, at Back to Sunnydale. So next week, we start season four. The freshman. The freshman. Mm-hmm. Do we meet Parker in season in the freshman? I think we do. Fuck that guy. Son of a bitch. He's such a piece of shit. Son of a bitch. All right. Did you you never lived on campus anywhere, Mm-mm. so you didn't have that horrible roommate moment. No. <sighs> <laughs> so apparently we're going to get into that horrible roommate moment with Marcella next episode. <laughs> so uh, that's gross. Uh, she just showed me a picture. That's not even the same guy. How do they do these cornrows? That's not, no. No. How do you, no. It's not the same actor. <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis, how do you get your hair done? This is dumb. All right. Subscribe, follow, like us on iTunes and Libsyn. Follow us on Twitter at Back to Sunnydale. And you can follow me, Camila, at the underscore rugged angel. Or me, Marcel, at mspear7338. All right. Thanks for hanging in there with us, guys. Um, Our outro song today is going to be the song that was overly played on every fucking graduation that I ever attended in 1998, 99, 2000. I'm surprised it wasn't on the show. Yeah. So uh, here you go. This is yours. So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable But in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Sure, arg.